But, like, yeah. what is going on? Like, if you're just saying, like, going to cameras... What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to another intense NECC matchup here tonight between St and Midland. Midland, Midland, excuse me, a team that we are, I believe, a little bit familiar with coming out of last week. It's actually uh, Sacramento State that we're familiar with. Midland, we have not seen yet on the broadcast, I believe, or at least you and I did not see them. But we did see Sacramento State Hornets gold last week take on Montclair. That was a match they won pretty decisively to move up to 1-0 and on the season. Midland, they fell last week to Bryant 0-2. So we do know there's a bit of a, you know, battle of the top dog versus the underdog early on. But it is very early on in the season. So, you know, strength of schedule. All that stuff, it can play into the matchup a little bit later on. What we do know is the order of these maps going into this series. 
yeah, the order of the map's going to be coming out, and I'd love to say a little surprise, oh, you know, no Icebox, but apparently Icebox was played earlier tonight, so I mean, apparently that's something to watch out for, a couple of these teams playing the Icebox, so that's definitely something. But moving in, our first map, I believe, is going to be Bind, our next map, I believe, is Haven, and then our third map, I think, was Split. Uh, it's, yeah, Bind for sure is the first one, I believe Sen is the second one, and then Split is the third one, so uh, don't we'll be seeing Haven tonight. Um, but let, let's talk a little bit more about the Sacramento State team, because we've already seen them once before, and, I mean, that was a matchup that went very one-sided after a little bit. Montclair, at the beginning, won about three rounds on the first map, which was split, and then from there, it was basically Hornets gold all the way. They won 13 rounds in a row, and they looked in a row. <laughs> very good on the Reyna. Astro, I believe, was the one playing the Reyna at that point, but here's the thing. Reyna got nerfed today into the ground, so I don't think we're going to be seeing her anytime soon. Yeah, like you said, the Reyna nerf comes out. It's relatively aggressive, and it's definitely going to modify play styles. We often refer to Reyna as a feast or famine character, and the fact that they've cut two of her abilities essentially in half is really going to be changing things up for that and making things a little bit more difficult to play. And if I'm not mistaken, Astru also, I think, busted out a raise at some point, but I may be getting these names mixed up. I've cast a lot of Valorant in the last week, so you have to forgive me if I'm getting a couple things mixed up here. But I think Astru... We also saw our raise come out, so we know that Reyna may not be their only, the only character they've got in their pocket. Yeah, absolutely. I, I do believe you're correct that we did see a raise from them, or another duelist. So we do know that they are a bit versatile, it's just that's one option that's off the table. Another thing we talked about uh, before the like, cast went live was, you know, the idea of Yoru. Yoru got a bit of quality of life changes. I wouldn't say it's a buff or a nerf, but Agreed. helps give some information out. So uh, do you think we might see some Yoru today? Uh, I think Yoru, like you said, a little bit more of a possibility. I don't think it's going to be kind of that, like you said. I don't think it's a nerf or a buff, but I think it's a decent change. I think Yoru may become a little bit more viable now that Reyna's out of the way. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to be playing Viper anytime soon. So just <laughs> as more characters kind of fall to the wayside, I think Yoru slowly is climbing his way up that ladder. And while he may necessarily not be, you know, viable or meta, so to speak, I think... Valorant, at the end of the day, comes down to how well these people perform on individual characters. So I think, you know, if somebody's particularly good with Yoru's kit, I think we can see some good value out of that. It's a possibility for sure. And like you said, Viper's still not viable. I'm surprised there weren't any changes to her, especially since Riot had said a while ago they wanted to change her kit. But still the same old, same old, so I don't think she's going to be busted out a lot. One thing, though, you talk about, you know, playing comfort picks or playing agents that you know very well. And one thing we do know about Sacramento State, too, is that they like to run Sage even though she isn't yeah. the best on every map. They ran her on both maps that they won. I wasn't surprised about it on Split. I think she's very valuable there. I was a bit surprised they ran her later on, but it seems like something they want to commit to. We know that combination of Omi and Oni, and I believe it was Omi that was just always on that Sage. Yeah, Omi and Oni, they had the similar names, and then they were always with each other. One of them was on Sova most of the time, and the other one was on Sage. And they always went back-to-back. -back. If one was to fall, the other one would immediately pick up a kill off the back of it. So they played kind of a weird trade playstyle. Like, there was two of them, so they were always ready for one of them to fall. And of course, you'd want it to be that Sova, because the Sage playing that healer, yada yada. But I definitely think that was something that was a weird strategy, but I mean, they had similar names, and then I feel like every time we saw them, they were almost shoulder-to-shoulder. Yeah, it's just it's just like they're almost like twins. It's just that one layer that makes the difference. So they had to stay back to back for most of the game. We should be getting into this game pretty shortly. I think we're just waiting on the lobby to get started. Um, hopefully we'll get back into this game soon. But I mean, if you're Midland University coming into this, there isn't a VOD on you. So you kind of have right. that advantage if you can watch what Sacramento State did last time. Um, a, sit, uh, a split is in the map pool, but... It's not going to be played unless it's a tiebreaker, so you don't have that exact idea of what they'll run. But, I mean, if you're mid and you're coming into this own one does that have any sort of effect on, like, your mindset coming into a second game, uh, second week of games? Yeah, I think, like you said, Sacramento, they have that VOD online, but to watch that VOD as Midland, I mean, last week was nothing short of a massacre. One of the games, like you said, 13-3, and three, they win 13 rounds in a row. I mean, that's definitely something terrifying to be going up against. Midland, they can come out, they can maybe get a little bit more aggressive than normal, and maybe... Maybe they can predict, like you said, maybe they can maybe learn some of what Sacramento's already been doing and put the pressure on to stall those plays for as long as possible, but... I mean, if I were to watch a VOD against a team I was going up against, and they go 13 rounds without dropping a single one, I would be, I'd be pretty spooked going into that. Yep, I think there's a bit to consider there, but we'll see what happens. It is going to be bind, and it's my favorite personal part of the game, at least at the very beginning. It is going to be the agent select, and 
already I'm seeing what could be up. No, it's just a bait. I see, you see the URL for like I saw it for seconds. a second. I was I saw so it for excited. A second. No, I agree. I was I was waiting for the Yoru to come out there, and I was like, oh, oh I can't oh. wait. And it looks like we might see Noru, Noro on the Yoru. That's going to be a tongue twister. Don't play Viper. Viper. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. But all right, we're going to take a look over here on the side of Sacramento, I believe, who's on the right. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. going to be Hayes on the Cypher. We've got what on the Killjoy. Now, that Cypher's not locked in yet, but we talk about the Cypher versus Killjoy all the time. Killjoy a little bit better on the offense and the defense, more particularly the offense. And Cypher really gets to shine on that defense, but you've got to make it through the game with him in an uncomfortable state so picking the cypher definitely going to be weird and I, so far we're not seeing any huge picks we're seeing some pretty familiar faces here in the competitive valorant scene so i mean nothing nothing groundbreaking quite yet yeah i mean the biggest differences are that killjoy versus cypher you've already talked about it enough i don't think we need to go into it anymore and i think the other thing is uh the sage again coming out from omi so that's something that we talked about predicted and here it is coming into fruition shiloh is actually going to lock in the omen it looks like they are Hovering over the Brimstone for a little bit that Oni's been running, and Oni was very deadly on that Brimstone. I think he was playing Brimstone and Sova last time, if I remember correctly. So those are the biggest differences. Um, I mean, there's actually a few different differences in this matchup, but the duelists are the same, and I think that's about what we expected. It, we were talking about it's basically a rotation between Rays, Phoenix, and Jet right now. So that's not a surprise at all. But, I mean, there's a lot of information you can get off of Sova with Scout. But on the other side, I mean, Sage is healing. That can be, like, life or death situation. If you're able to get that heal orb into someone, that can change the, everything in a round. So it's going to be interesting to see how these two different play styles work out. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's going to be interesting, because we talked about it already, that Sage coming out. Um, not something you see, really, at all, unless it's this team, unless not it's Sacramento here. Yeah, especially not on Bind. So to see the Sage come out, I think you can see some great utilization of walls. But that's more of a defense thing than an offense thing. So I think the Sage coming out is really going to have to fall into that healer slot and just try their best to keep the team alive. The gates, you know, and this is round. On and for the Fenders, they decided to go full classic. Nothing else. Light shields for everyone on the other side. Ghost and the Frenzy. And the Frenzy did get a bit more expensive. So that's going to be a little bit more out of Astro's pocket. And the attackers, they're going to be running in very aggressively towards A. Yeah, the attackers storming in here. Sacramento, this is something we're pretty familiar with them doing. And it looks like Astro already able to find Shiloh. Oni able to find Lux in the chaos of that as well. So an immediate 3v5. Here comes the spike plant. And Sacramento looking stronger than ever. Coming in the speed of lightning here. Able to take out almost half the team. And Scout knows somebody's in there. Are they going to be able to find the headshot? No, it's going to be Mitchell onto Scout in return. A 5v2. And this first round almost flawless. But Noro able to find Astro. And Hayes able to pick up Noro off the back of it. The sole survivor is going to be that killjoy, but Hayes going to find that headshot once again. Sacramento with a very convincing first round here. And I think a big part of it is the fact that they decided to buy better weapons. Obviously, yep. now the Frenzy a bit more expensive, but it's only 100 more credits, so it's not too much of a commitment. It's really strong right now, so why not? That and the Ghost, I would say, are the best sidearms in the game besides the Sheriff, but you don't want to use all 800 of your credits in the first round, so now Sacramento State gonna be able to buy and they're gonna go for full armor full. and specters that's that's a yeah, lot that's of and that's a lot of armor <laughs> usually don't expect that usually it's a light armor buy and set and now it looks like after going to a they want to go to b yeah so the question to ask you you might have talked about this a little more between rounds are we gonna be seeing that marshall anymore today it was buffed a little bit i think it was made a little bit cheaper as well even if it wasn't there was that buff that went through so i mean that's definitely something to keep an eye out for is, is that gonna be a little more likely in this gameplay it's 100 credits less. It is buffed a little bit more. I don't expect it. And oh my god, Nora are going to take out Astro. Trade. That's a big trade. 4v4 now. Yeah, the Phoenix is both taken out on both sides and Ray is on the side of Sacramento. We see Mitchell taking just a little bit of damage. What picks up Oni with the pistol? Omi able to find what off the back of it. The healer taking a bit of a kill there. You don't have to heal your team if there's nobody there to do damage, right? So Omi putting the pressure on once again, already finding their first elimination. And it's going to be a 3v3, the spike plant able to secure those. So even if we see the loss here from Sacramento, they get those extra credits just for planting. Once again, they've got the firepower. And at the end of the day, that really could just be the only difference maker. They can fire more bullets faster. They also have their angles covered very well. That isn't going to be a paranoia, though, or not. It's actually a smoke, so it's not going to be But Shiloh, of only a sliver of health, still alive, but that Sage doesn't have the perfect angle once they go for the spike diffuse. I was going to say that the biggest thing about Sage right now, besides her heal, is her wall. As you saw, they put it on spawn side. It worked out really well for them. And oh my oh. goodness, Shiloh able to get three kills. Oh me. Not able. Six health. That's They need to hit one shot. They just need to breathe yeah. on Shiloh, and 
not able to hit it, and that's a huge thrifty round. I yeah, maybe, maybe a bit of a choke wow. coming out from Omi there. The Sage unable to hit the shots. Like you said, one bullet, not even to the head. Just any part of the body would have been able to take Shiloh out of that fight. But all of a sudden, able to secure that thrifty. And like you said, Shiloh picked up a triple there. So definitely a good look here coming out. You'd expect something a little bit, a little bit more aggressive from Sacramento. Maybe some more consistent aim. But, you know, now things are going to be tied up here on round two. Yeah, I think if you're Omi... I was just talking about how good the Sage Wall is, and you use it early. Um, I don't know if you have slows, but if you have those, throw them down so you get a better idea of where they are. And also just be, play a bit more patiently, because they are uh, they peaked out, and they thought that they'd still be on the spike, and they weren't. So you gotta wait for the second one, or, you know, just... You, you can be a bit more patient with that. And you asked the Marshal to come out. It is actually coming out on the defensive side for Scout. Yeah, we're gonna see Scout with the Marshal, like you said. So definitely an unusual pick, not something that you really would have seen until today with that buff and that price decrease coming out. And it can definitely the job done though as long as scouts hitting their shots i mean the marshal does a pretty penny of damage there it's gonna be a 5v5 everybody's gonna play that slow patient game until at least one elimination comes through the attackers sacramento we saw their biggest success was when they just stormed in guns blazing now they're gonna play a little bit more patient hayes able to use the shorty finds shiloh but noro able to pick up oni off the back of it mitchell finds lux noro now putting the pressure onto this raise able to pick up mitchell there so it's gonna be a 3v3 3v2 as noro picks up a triple or a double excuse me in the mix up there 3v2 and the cypher on the side of sacramento Sacramento Hayes is really, really down a notch of damage here. Sage, the spike carrier, still full health, but the plant seemingly more and more impossible unless they can pick up at least one more kill here. And it seems like they have a good, a good idea where Hayes is because he just threw a shock dart right into Ooh. their vicinity. It didn't hit, and now the healing orb's gonna go out, but it looks like they're trying to go for a pincer approach. They're just gonna go for the TP, but they're gonna take oh. out Hayes. And now Noro, only one kill away from that ace. I wanna see it. I wanna see it happen now. Omi instead gonna go for the spike plant, gonna put the wall up and plant the spike right in the line of fire, able to do so, now has to 3v1 the madness and that's almost impossible, I believe, like you said, I think that is an ace coming out from Noro there, so a phenomenal look for Midland moving forward, Sacramento started strong, but they're gonna lose the lead here on round 3. Yep, that is the ace indeed, and here's the thing, that, that thrifty round, second round that they won, sets them up in such a good position now, that's Absolutely. a round they shouldn't have won, and somehow, someway, they just kept getting kills of the classic, the classic is very dangerous at short range if you use the alternate fire. It's basically a shotgun. And I think that, you know, we just saw Sacramento State get a little bit too aggressive there. It works well the first round, but the second round, point B is a bit more close quarters, especially if you actually jump out of hookah. So there, it didn't work out for them. Now they are able to buy, but it set them back two rounds, and they really should have the lead right now. Yeah, absolutely, especially with the team as dominant as what we saw last week. They come out hyper-aggressive, they go 13-3, and three, and it's just nothing short of amazing on one of their matchups, but now they're going to be fumbling a little bit here. Now, like I said, 13-3, and three, so they lost a couple of rounds there. They ended up winning 13 in a row. They really found their momentum, they found their groove, but the aggression is going to have to come out here. I mean, top tier, because like you said, there was a thrifty round they should not have lost, and that really did set them back quite a bit. Good news is that they do have the Sage Resurrection online, so if someone falls and they're able to get that off, that could be huge. They also now have the Showstopper, so that could be a great way to get onto the point if Mitchell can hit it. Um, we've seen quite a few races who have not been able to land that shot exactly, but now they're going to have a great line of sight coming out of showers, and that's a trade. Oh, yeah, it's going to be the trade. Noro able to find two in the mix-up. We see the showstopper from Mitchell, but Lux going to stop it right away. That show has been stopped. Hayes finds Lux with the headshot. Noro, once again, picking up Astro here. Definitely playing that top fragger on the side of Midland. Ten eliminations, most in lobby right now. And Hayes able to find a double kill. It's going to be a one-to-one. -one. They're both pretty low, but Noro on that Phoenix doing a great job so far and can heal themselves. Yeah, I'm surprised they haven't gone for their hot hands yet, but... Gonna keep it for now. There's gonna be cyber the gate. cyber cage. We're gonna be running into each other. The neural theft coming out. Gonna be shooting through the box. And that's Ooh, gonna be the clutch be kill. Noro and Hayes both getting four kills that round, but it is gonna be the cypher coming out clutch on it. And that was just a really great play there. It was so unlucky for Noru if they Very had just true. followed up and I don't know if I don't think they had any curveballs left online, but if they did, they could have just thrown it around the corner there because they knew exactly where Hayes was hiding, but Hayes is going to peek it, run at them, not going to be quiet, and end up winning out. Yeah, Hayes really, like you said, very unlucky for Noro, but very lucky for Hayes. No curveballs online, able to get the elimination off the back of it, and Hayes just doing a great job there, securing another victory for the team, able to tie things up, but Noro right now, I mean... The player to watch out for, the, the, like I said, most eliminations in lobby currently in the lead on their own team by seven. So, I mean, that's they are really doing a great job. Yeah, Noro currently is this Midland team. As you said, seven more kills than anyone else. The team has, I'm trying to do quick math here, I believe 15 kills overall, and 10 of those yep. are from Noro. So, 
they really need to enable this Phoenix as much as possible, but also they really need the rest of the team to step up a little bit. Yeah, they, like you said, definitely need the rest of the team to step up a little bit. Every team is only as strong as their weakest link, and maybe we'd see Midland winning this a little bit more consistently if the players were finding some eliminations that weren't just Noro. Able to get Mitchell there in the mix-up. First elimination coming from Noro once again, that first blood, and he's going to have to use that hot hands on the ground trying to keep himself alive just a bit. What picks up Omi with the headshots, and now 3v5. Lux able to find Oni, and right now we're seeing Sacramento play a very slow game, and I feel like it's really costing them a lot of rounds that should not be ending so aggressively in the enemy team favor. I mean, they basically tried to go for flawless. a firefight, and it, it's a flawless round for Midland, and that time it was a bit more well-rounded by them. It wasn't just Noro. Noro got two kills there, but the rest of the team, they also got some value. So th that's just a big play for them, and I'm not really sure what Sacramento was thinking. They just kept trying to fire out of B-Long as well as out of Hookah, and they were just not landing shots at all. There, That really should have been a sign once they lost the first person to back out and rotate. Instead, yeah, they pulled a little bit too f steadfast, and... Their economy is now, once again, not so great. They're going to have to go for another save round. And again, this is, I, I think it all goes back to that second round. If Midland yep. is able to snowball this for the rest of the game, that second round thrifty that they lost, that's going to be what's cursing them. Yeah, I definitely think so as well. That's That Thrifty was nothing short of a miracle there for Midland, and now they're really taking that inch and running a mile with it. Currently, Sacramento, a team that we saw so dominant last week, maybe just had a lucky streak because Midland really putting, giving them a run for their money, putting the pressure on as well. We're going to find an early elimination. Noro with the wall bang onto Astro. One Phoenix takes out another. Noro finds Mitchell, and here comes the Killjoy ultimate, but I mean, it's that, that almost feels unnecessary at this point. You're already up by two. Yeah, it might be unnecessary, but it also zones out where... Um, there may be enemies on long. Now they know that Oni's there. So even though it doesn't get Oni, they, they're gonna have to force you to teleport unless they want to get out of this alive. Or they maybe try to go back onto point. I think that's not a great idea, but it looks like where they're positioning with Scout. Or not with Scout. Scout's on the other team. But where they're, I mean, they're just holding on to the mid right now. They're holding on to market, sort of. So we're gonna see Scout on the flank. Yeah, the paranoia comes through. We saw paranoia just for a moment from Shiloh. I don't think it hit anybody. Scout able to pick up their first elimination of the game onto Oni, and that's going to be another almost flawless run coming out from Midland. They're going to take the score from 3-2, to two, make it 4-2, to two, putting themselves up in the lead by those two rounds. And look at how quickly Noro got run it back. Uh, they used it previously, like, I think two rounds ago, and already it's online once again. So that just shows you how good they are. But again, the rest of the team is stepping up a little bit. We're seeing Shiloh getting in the action specifically. They have now five kills. Um, and there's nothing wrong with having like that one player who's just really, really good and helps you get to that next level. Um, but like if you lose Noro early on, like how's the rest of the team going to win? That, that's the question we have yet to see answered. Noro hasn't fallen in a few rounds and now the attackers can buy and looks like they're going to be going to A. Yeah, the attackers can finally buy, but I think we need to see a much more aggressive team. We saw it on round one, and they won it with flying colors. I mean, it's a phenomenal performance. They find the eliminations in the blink of an eye, and they secure a round, and then they just haven't been that aggressive since. I think we really need to see more pressure coming out. We're going to see the attackers run it back coming out here. Astro trying to put the pressure on, trying to pick up another elimination or two if possible. Here's going to be the Brimstone ultimate right off the back of it. Oni finds Shilo there. That's going to be a great elimination in favor of Sacramento. But of course, they're going to have to trade it right away. Lux picks up Mitchell with the headshot kill. And now 4v4. Sacramento just not pushing it as quickly as I feel they need to be once they get kills like that. It was a great combination with the orbital strike as well as the slow. Oh. But now this Hunter's Fury is going to put this oh. on ice literally and figuratively. And the gunfights are just going so well for Midland right now. Yeah. It seems like Sacramento State, they keep trying to take them at distance. And you saw there that there's one person that's really low. It's Lux, who almost falls. But everyone else, perfect condition. Shiloh ends up falling at the very end. But that's only because of that great combination. Beyond that, which was not gunplay at all. It was just comboing ability of ultimates. Nothing else is really done there for Sacramento State. They do get the plant. So again, like, economy is a little bit healthier. But you've lost quite a few rounds in a row now. And... Once again, it's back to the drawing board with a light buy. Yeah, I mean, just the economy between these two teams, Midland with the lowest one on their team, 4,000 credits online, and we're looking at the most credits on the side of Sacramento is 2,700. So there's definitely a huge differential in this economy here. Our attackers, I mean, every round they lose, it's just going to make this harder and harder. They've only planted the spike, I think, one time in these five rounds, so their economy just draining every single round. Is draining indeed. Now they're going to have to make some magic happen. And we've already seen a, a thrifty round happen on the other side for Midland. So maybe by some miracle, Sacramento State 2 can do it as well. But they already know where Mitchell is. And you do not want to be spammed out. I mean, the Sheriff can get a lot of damage done. But you don't want to get into this war firing against a Vandal. 
Yeah, you're going to lose that, the fire rate. I mean, you're going to have to hit, uh, you've got one shot, and it's got to go right through the head or exactly. you lose that fire. I mean, it's, you've got you've got a single opportunity there, and I think that's not a risk Mitchell should be taking right now because the team, of course, being down by those three rounds. The spike carrier, again, going to be Omi. That's something we see they do pretty consistently. It's something they're very clearly familiar with, and now they're just going to have to put the pressure on and maybe take a gun a gunfight just a little bit closer. Take this firefight to them rather than waiting for them to shoot you out one by one on B-Long here. Mitchell able to pick up that first elimination onto Scout, but what? Gonna find Oni. Again, they're just firing from B over and over, and it's never working. They really need to start putting pressure on. They need to either be choosing a different approach or just gunning it all the way in. And they, they are going to go for a different approach here. You're seeing the, the really quick rotate. Uh, they made noise at B. They got Killjoy stuff out. They got a Ooh. kill on A, and now they're just going to try oh. to get Shiloh. Shiloh ends, it. Shiloh ends the approach. The, the showstopper from Lux is going to be stopped. I think it came out for a brief moment. Going to be a 2v3 in favor of Midland. Of course, Noro finds Mitchell. Omi finds Shiloh. And there is a world where this is winnable. But with 10 seconds left on the clock, I don't think it's the world that we're going to be living in. The pressure has to come out right here, right now. What picks up Omi? And that's going to be a sixth round win here for Midland. Sacramento, definitely not the team we saw last week. Yeah, Shiloh just spams through. Just stole that cipher. play entirely. Just... just Bams through the cyber cage and somehow is able to find two kills. One of them, I think it was a collateral or a wall bang. It was a wall uh, bang. Either way, it's just super impressive. It's just, it was actually insane. And the play there from Shiloh really set them up. I mean, it was a great rotation too. That's what we needed to see from Sacramento State. They were just a bit too slow and they didn't go for the plant right away. You saw where their stage got cut out. Omi was not anywhere near the place to actually plant the spike, even though it was a 1v2 and they had resurrection. Uh, stuff like that, bad rotations, that's what costs you. And there, it's going to cost him another round, and now Scout has the Operator. Yeah, the Operator now online. One of the scariest guns in the game. And Scout, not necessarily having the highest kill game here, only picking up three eliminations so far. But, you know, maybe the Scout's the gun they've been waiting for. Mitchell able to find Noro right at the start of things. So the top fragger now taken out on the side of Midland, and that might be all they needed because Sacramento pouring through the gates here, able to pick up two more eliminations. Going to make it a 3v5, a 1v5. In the blink of an eye, Sacramento comes to life. Just getting warmed up at least a little bit. Scout finds the kill on to Mitchell, but Hayes going to pick up Scout right at the end. So that Operator going to be sent down the drain looks like we're gonna see it even trade it out i think scout gra or hayes grabbed it right at the end there yeah gonna have that operator for this round yeah, that's a gun they'll take any day of the week for free Absolutely. so great round by them i mean the economy is still pretty good on the at least for noru um actually i, I look at the players on the side of midland and besides what everyone else is kind of hurting right now so despite the fact that they've been winning you can just tell like how much it is on Noru's back right now because of how much money, and they're going to have to buy for their teammates to try to keep the rest of their players healthy. So because of that round win, now there is a world where somehow, some way, Sacramento State goes into the swap tied, oh, and now that they have this offer, they can just do like that. One <laughs> shot, one kill. Yeah, absolutely. That's definitely going to help them move into this. Like you said, there's a world where this ends tied. And I think Omi apparently has been waiting for an operator because they come out stronger than ever. The Killjoy ultimate going to come up, try to protect that point. We hear the Showstopper coming out as well. It's Hayes able to find what, but they've got to get rid of this. The lockdown now destroyed. Going to be taken out as well. Mitchell finds luck. Sacramento, I, did they just need time to warm up? Because now they are fragging like nobody's business. I think they're doing the same thing they did the first one. They're finally playing aggressive. They played very scared for a few rounds in a row. And on some rounds, you kind of have to do that just because you don't of course, have of course. the eco you need. And you can't really engage with super, like inferior weapons. But now they've kind of gotten their groove back. And still haven't used that resurrection. So that is something that will be online for the future. But just the way they ran onto that point and took it over... It's going to be impossible right now for Midland to win this round. At best, they're just looking for trades. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Sacramento, they're so weird. They lose at the beginning, and then they just start steamrolling. It's like they flip a switch, and all of a sudden, they just come to life unlike any other team that we've seen. This spike, 100% going to be coming through here. We see some pretty kill-hungry players on the side. Mitchell finds the kill on the scalp, but Shiloh does find that trade at the end of the day. Mitchell not really giving up any really important weapon there they didn't have an operator or an odin or anything but they're definitely gonna maybe regret that kill coming through because it's of course gonna help the defenders just a little bit just a little bit uh both can, both teams can still buy for the most part it might actually be lux cannot on the side yeah, lux of midland scout looking pretty low there but yeah scout uh scout barely able to buy here but i, I think they might actually been bought for and actually everyone able so. to buy so everyone gets out of that scot free oh, for the time being, being. Noro being at 700 credits makes me think they were definitely bought for. Yeah, yeah, you're basically the sugar daddy of your team at that <laughs> point. You're just buying everyone else. And that's because, I mean, you're 16-5-1. That's yeah, still I mean, that's six nuts. more kills than anyone else in the lobby. 
but it, it just shows you like when they're when they start losing rounds you can't just rely on noro to of be course. able to buy everyone and keep them in it yeah like you said noro only has so much money there in that credit bank and like you said does a phenomenal job six more eliminations than anybody else in lobby but still losing those last two rounds it shows you how how much they really popped off in those first 10. Absolutely, but now that the, the tables have kind of turned a little bit, the resurrection is the only ultimate online, so even if the attackers lose someone early, that that's still so clutch for them, and if they just lose someone, like if someone dies, they could just use it for econ, I, I don't think, you know, this deep, before the swap, they would do that, but of course. it is a possibility, so there's a lot of opportunity right now for Sacramento, they are playing this a bit slower though than last round, and right now it looks like they're Mostly going towards B. Yeah, we'll see if Mitchell rotates as well. I was thinking they might try to clear out A on their own, but no, that is going to be the full rotation towards B. So they really need to make sure that Omi gets set up in a place where they can frag out with the operator because that has been what's really enabled them so far. Yeah, absolutely. And we see Sacramento, when they push slow like this, these are usually the rounds they end up losing. So they're really mm -hmm. going to have to kick it into high gear because as we see in the minimap there, the rest of mid they are rotating back to B. So they need to pick up at least one elimination before that team gets here. But the pressure is going to be coming out. Blink and you miss it. What picks up Omi? Hayes able to find what? So that's going to be an immediate trade there. A 4v4, 3v4, and 3v3 in favor of neither team. Scout able to find Oni, but Oni picks up Lux. It's going to be a 2v1. Scout now fragging just a little bit here, able to get these eliminations. And Mitchell, I mean, six seconds this is all but impossible probably going for the save able to find noro but the round definitely going to end in favor of our defenders here the question is can mitchell get the last exit frag i do not think so so yeah i mean it, you, you won't get the draw but you're bringing it at least a bit closer um even with all those trades i think that for the most part maybe yeah besides lux everyone can get and they are they're gonna have to settle for the guardian which is still a pretty good gun if you can hit your shots so no harm no foul there and that resurrection like i keep talking about how important it is but the the time they needed omi's dead omi had the spike yeah. and just jumped straight out to the point and got taken out immediately if you're gonna be running the op you cannot be the one planning and especially if you're the sage you got to be staying as yeah. far back as possible yeah, not only as the operator or the controller of the operator, the operator operator, if you will, you should be playing in the back line, but as a sage, you should also be playing in the back line. So that was almost two reasons that that sage shouldn't have been so far forward. But of course, at the end of the day, everybody wants to find their kill, find their glory, and that just was not the time for Omi there. Now, Sac Sacramento, they're gonna be going into halftime here. They're gonna be down three, going in seven, five, a score that we're very familiar with for other reasons, but they definitely coming into this halftime, you know, they're gonna want these scores to obviously be as close as possible, Playing that defense, that slow attack, Scout already finding Astro. Omi gets the resurrection, but might have to give their own life to do it. No, finds Lux with the headshot. Shiloh again, gonna stop this offense in its tracks. Picks up a double kill, back to back there. 4v3, this could still be winnable for Sacramento, but they're gonna have to give us quite the play. And, and, and like they should be down a lot more honestly lux just not hitting the shots there yeah. like, like i said yeah. you can't really spray and pray with a gun like the guardian so an unfortunate misplay there i'm surprised that sacramento state is still roaming around a i would really think they they would try to go b obviously that's where the killjoy has made her home every round basically but if you're able to overpower her that gives you a big advantage i think the problem is that they're just playing a bit too passive we talked about how great they look when they play aggressive and you, you said it yourself when they play slow they lose, and now they've played so slow, we've seen that the Soba has actually rotated all the way back, so now it's a 2 on 2 instead of a 3v1. Yeah, and now if they can pick up the elimination onto this Killjoy, that could be nothing short of fantastic and huge, but they're really going to have to put the pressure on. Cypher moving in on his own, going to be taken out by Scout. What picks up Astro and Omi, a critical condition here, 8 health, going to be taken out, gets the wall bank kill, but Noro able to secure that victory. Going to be going into this halftime marker here, looking at 8 and 4. That's going to be that's gonna be rough here for Sacramento. They've got quite the hill to climb if they want to come back from this. I do indeed, but now that they're on defense, it might be a bit of an easier task, um, as we talk about Yijinerly and Valorant. Maps are defender-sided, so let's see if that does reign true today, but I, I just think for them it's more... I mean, Midland played amazing, at least their Phoenix played amazing. Um, Shiloh actually, I think, also did really well. There are some great agreed, plays agreed. there from that omen, but in general, it's just... The, the Sacramento State we saw last week does not seem to be the one we're seeing today, where they are very decisive and had a lot of good you know, team plays. Here it seems like they're just running onto points blindly, um, and they're just taking so much time that you saw there at the very end. They only had 11 seconds left, so the only option was to run onto a point blindly, knowing that it was certain death. Yeah, they're just playing too passively, too slow, but maybe that slow passive defensive play style works a little bit better for them on defense. Maybe they're able to turn this around, but like I said already, they've got an insane hill to climb if they have any hope of trying to take a victory here up against Midland in this first round. And we look at the buys, and... 
Uh, we're seeing that the attackers actually buy a little bit this time. Uh, last time they just went with classics. This time there's three ghosts online, and Lux is gonna fall very low quickly on the other side. There is a frenzy from Oni, oh. who has not been as loud as they usually have been. Yeah, I definitely agree. Oni playing a little bit more passive, and I, I don't think we saw that on the Brimstone at all last time. I think it was just constantly that Sova, and not that that's going to make a huge difference, but of course, that's going to be a different kit, so you think maybe the Sova is going to work a little bit better. Two eliminations already in favor of Sacramento. The defense already looking a little bit better for them. Definitely not great yet. A 3v5 is, of course, winnable. Now, a 2v5, a little bit harder to do. Ray's Mitchell currently at critical condition there. Very low on health, and Astro looking plenty good on this Phoenix. It's going to be Scout and Shiloh versus the world here. Shiloh, one of the top fraggers on the side of Midland, so I wouldn't be surprised if they pick up one, maybe two eliminations before they go down, but I, I don't think we're going to see Midland come out on top of this one. 30 seconds. No, and there's only 30 seconds left, so they got to make a play soon. Uh, it is their sub that has the spikes. So they, they could just try to go for a rotation now that they've gotten a kill into a very weak Mitchell. That makes things a little bit better, but now Scout's just going to run in and die. Oh. And Checked his uh, corners, but took a little bit too long to do it there. And Hayes, they get the final kill and check their camera just to make sure there's no one else left alive. And they're going to take one round back. And, I, and that's how they started things off last time. They did win the first round. Um, now this really is kind of like crumble. the second first round. Yeah, and then they lost the round they should have won. So here again, if they are going to buy, I think the biggest thing is now that they're on the defense, they can't play that aggressive style. They can't really run into people, or at least they shouldn't be running into people. If they, It, it, it is a strategy sometimes on defense to just run in and overwhelm. But I would not suggest that, especially here on Bind, when you have the better ranged weapons. Except yeah, for the right. Bucky that Hayes has. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of surprised by that Bucky. I mumbled about that a little bit while you were talking. Kind of shocked that Hayes is going to choose the Bucky, which when you're protecting B long like this, it works. Because you're going to be pretty close quarters in Hookah there. I mean, it's definitely going to be something to find the pressure and really get aggressive. But other than that, I mean, if they rush A, if they come from the other side, I mean... That the Bucky works in one scenario here, and there's about 10 ways for our defenders to approach, or for our attackers to approach, so I think that's definitely a weird choice, but the rest of the team looking good on the Spectres, one of my favorite, if not my favorite gun in the game. Sacramento, you know, they're able to secure one round, and they ended up losing this to a Thrifty last time, so hopefully that doesn't happen again, maybe they can find their footing here for the first time, what feels all game. Yeah, going back to the Bucky, I think it makes sense if you're holding like a corner in Hookah, but instead you sure. are playing the backup point of your camera, so it doesn't make as much sense. And you talk about the Spectre, and there are no Stingers. We have not seen a Stinger once, and you know why? Because it also got nerfed in the ground just like Rain, and it's also a bit more expensive. So I don't think we'll be seeing that anytime soon. Yeah, a bit more expensive for not as high quality of a weapon. Noro able to find a great headshot on the Mitchell right away, able to open things up. We're gonna find a Gonna find their first spike plant, it seems. Lux picks up Omi, but Omi was able to find the kill onto Nero first. Noro, excuse me, I can try to call him Nero. Oni able to find Scout, but what picks up Oni? We're gonna see trades once again in favor of our attacking team Midland currently. The aggression coming out, the pressure going down. Things are gonna have to be pretty, I mean, again, we're gonna have to see a miracle play coming out from our defenders here. Hayes and Astro, the two survivors. The pressure is gonna have to be nothing short of insane. Half the defuse coming out, but they're gonna lay into it. Hayes able to find not a single, but a double, a triple kill. Hayes cleans it up, looks for the defuse as well. A phenomenal look, they almost lost that round again, but just great job coming out from Hayes. Able to put themselves almost at the top of the leaderboard, only two eliminations below Noro now. And you see what happened there was that even though they were up, they weren't able to secure the guns from the kills they had. Yep. So, uh, there were two classics still online. I think it was only Noru who had um, a, a Spectre at that point. So even though they were able to get the spike point, they weren't able to get the superior firepower, which is a big part of why they ended up losing that round. So if they had maybe canvassed the point, tried to find those guns ahead of time before just going for the immediate spike point, because they cleared out and they had time, but didn't play patient enough. It's going to cost them dearly and... Sacramento State, they're starting to mount a comeback. Yeah, Sacramento State, we've seen them come back. You know, last time they came back from 0 to 3. This time they've got a slightly larger hill to climb, but they're only two games away from tying things up here. There is a world, of course, and I say this often, there is a world where either of these teams can win. We can see high-quality gameplay coming out from both these teams. We've seen in their top moments, they really are forces to be reckoned with. Now, of course, it's going to come down to that first blood, that first elimination from either of these teams. Who's going to be able to pick it up? Scout just blind-firing into the smoke here, trying to find even a little bit of damage. Unable to do so there. Scout, kind of very hit or miss on several of these rounds. We started off, I think, the first five or six rounds not finding a single elimination, but then all of a sudden able to find two, three eliminations per round. A great, a very slow defense coming out once again, and this is something that I feel hasn't really worked for either team. Astro able to find what with the headshot, putting the pressure on our defenders, or excuse me, on our attackers, even stronger. Midland, they really seem like a team where if they lose the first player, if they lose a player first, they end up losing that round. So we're going to have to see some top frags coming out once again from Noro. 
And they're gonna have to do something. They're gonna go really hard right now on to be. They're gonna use a lot of utility, the paint shifts as well as the curveball, but haven't been able to find out this cipher yet. But there is a trace, and now it's a 4v4, and they know there's one around the corner. Yeah, 4v3 here in favor of this team. And see Noro able to get rid of the run it back, but now he knows that Phoenix right around the corner. I think, no, maybe he doesn't. Okay, I thought he was gonna go for it. Shiloh going for that spike plant as well. Omi picks up Scout. We're gonna see the hot hands just trying to keep Noro alive here, putting the pressure on Shiloh, able to find Oni 2v3 in favor of Sacramento. A flash comes through onto Noro. Can't react fast enough. Astro with their third kill of the game there. Able to find a lot of eliminations. Another defuse comes out from Sacramento. That's gonna be great. Like you said, they're on the up and up. Things are turning in their favor. So I think what happened there with Noru was that they were trying to figure out where they're running back the respawn would be, and they saw it, but there's only a split second when they won't have their gun. So it's a very quick thing where you got immediately back into being able to go into a firefight, and once you see the gun spawn in their hands, that's when you have to run. And they only had four health, so they could have gone for the kill. I think they actually had enough time just to get like one shot or two. You know, they might have been able to win the fight there, but instead they decided to play it a bit more safe. And while they were able to help get a few more kills down the road, they don't win the round. So that's going to be something that they might be questioning about, you know, questioning themselves about later. And now they can't buy. Oh, yeah, they can't. They can't buy really much of anything. They've got very few credits in the bank and they're going to have to come in. We see a sheriff from Noro and that, I mean, like I always say about that gun, you have one chance. You need to hit a headshot. You need to get an immediate kill or it's useless. What going to take out Astro with a sheriff of their own, however, able to put the pressure out. Hey, is able to find Shiloh immediate going to be 4v4. Some grenades coming out from Lux early on, throwing themselves into the middle of the point. The tripwire going to catch them just a minute and it's Hayes almost single-handedly ripping this attack apart. Able to secure, I think, two eliminations there. Mitchell finds Lux and the what, finding two eliminations of their own and Scout, the Silva on their loan, some Mitchell finding a triple kill at the very end there. Gonna be another round win for Sacramento. They are coming in hotter than ever, able to tie things up. They are indeed, and I, I think you look at the leaderboard and, you know, they are throwing the kills around. Three of them already at double digits of Hayes and Mitchell leading the way, but that's what we really need to see on the other side. Shiloh has stepped a lot up pretty big for Midland, but it's still Nora who's leading the charge, so they need everyone else to kind of try to match up right now, and it seems like the sail has been kind of taken out of, or the wind has been taken out of their sail just a little bit. Obviously, that round had to be a light buy, so now they can go for a full buy, so they'll be at even strength. But we saw why the Stinger is not being bought a lot. I believe it was yeah. Lux that tried it out, and you, you used to be able to just kind of like hold down left mouse button and you'd be able to get a kill, even at pretty ridiculous ranges. Now it, it's just not nearly as good as it used to be. Yeah, absolutely not. We're going to hear the run it back coming out very quickly. It looks like they're going to try to push in as quickly and aggressively as they can. But unfortunately, Noro unable to find much off the back of it. I think they were eliminated pretty early on there. I mean, not eliminated, but the run it back was destroyed there relatively quickly. In Sacramento, I just want to point out, that's three defuse rounds in a row. That's pretty That's pretty insane to lose so many aggressive rounds in that first half. And now to come back, tie things up. They're only a couple of rounds away, five rounds away from winning this. Only able to find Lux, but Scout gets that revenge kill. Mitchell finding what? Putting Sacramento back in the lead. Oni finds Noru, Mitchell finds Scout, Shiloh, the sole survivor, the top fragger we need, but no, it's going to be Oni picking up that elimination. That's going to be another round win for Sacramento. And I think we're seeing a bit of what Sacramento did, is now what Midland is doing. They're playing a bit too scared when they try to enter a point. They lose one or two at the beginning. There was actually a trade at the very beginning because they were able to catch out a very aggressive Sage, Omi, who was a bit too far forward. But beyond that, I mean, they didn't even really enter the point. Uh, they never really touched it. They were playing a mid in showers, and just the angles that were being held from Sacramento State 2 were very, very good. And now they're going to have the first lead that they've had in a very long time. Yeah, like you said, the first lead they've had in a very long time, if not almost all game. They won the first round. That was the last time they had a lead, I think, other than right now. So mm -hmm. the pressure coming out. Lux putting that bomb buddy down early on, trying to find a little bit of value, seeing if anybody's hiding in hookah, as they very often love to do. Mitchell, however, going to frag in the back line. We're watching the wrong rays at the moment because Mitchell able to secure a double kill there. Going to be flanking up and able to find not one, not two, but three kills onto Lux as well. Astro finds what to the ace off the table, but a wall bang onto Shiloh. That is a flawless round coming out from Sacramento. They are back in full swing. We almost saw our second ace of the series there. Mitchell has now surpassed Hayes as the top fragger, not only on the team, but in and the lobby. lobby. Mitchell getting three there, and Astro says, you know what, I'm not going to let you have all the fun here. So it's, it, it, again, like, it's like the individual accomplishment versus the team accomplishment. Right now, you're finally bringing things back, and it's when it matters most. This game has been turned on its head, and now they're only three rounds away from winning the first map. Yeah, I mean, they, they really come down from the depths once again. Seems to be Sacramento's favorite hobby is starting to lose, starting to look a little rough, and then coming back in full swing, putting the pressure on. And right now, that's...
gonna be doing again. Mitchell, it looks like pushing in very aggressively with Omi. They're gonna wall off bathroom, and that's showers is definitely somewhere to. It's, it's a, a strategy, not one that I'm necessarily fan, a fan of, but of course, I'm not a huge fan of playing Sage on this map anyway. We see the showstopper, definitely gonna find one, if not both these players here, able to take on Mitchell. We're gonna stand on Omi. Omi can't hit the shot. Lux able to find the elimination there. The chaos coming out from Lux, able to find almost half of the team here. One more elimination, gonna secure three kills. Just looking for anybody to unload this clip onto. The spike is gonna be planted. This is the first time in a long time we've seen a great look coming out from Midland. Haze, however, the one person you probably don't wanna have left alive because I feel that anybody on the side of Sacramento is able to clutch an ace. It's gonna be Haze himself. That's one. Make it two eliminations. Make it three. Three and a turret. I almost started yelling for four. What? Able to find Oni and Haze trying, going for the deep. He's gonna find the bait. Make it four. Haze able to find an elimination there. Pure chaos coming out. That's gonna be another defuse round coming out for Sacramento. That was wow. I'm okay. First of all, let's talk about that Lux play. I thought for sure they were immediately gonna get mowed down by Oni no. there. But no, somehow they get the double kill. They're dancing on Omi's head after they kill Mitchell. I mean, that was I, that was hilarious. I heard a producer laugh about it. I was just like <laughs> amazed by it. And and yet still they lose the round. I think Omi's biggest weakness. Up. I think Omi's biggest weakness is simply being caught off guard. That's the second time we've seen them win or lose a firefight that was basically handed to them. So maybe they're a little bit more of a passive player. They take the kills they're sure of, but when you when you run right into them face first, that is really when Omi seems to crumble a little bit. What now? Trying to find the early elimination, but Mitchell gonna find the kill onto what instead. Gonna secure another round here very early on. Gonna put in favor of Sacramento. And Sacramento, they, they're all of a sudden, they were losing brutally, but all of a sudden after winning six rounds in a row, seven rounds in a row that's gonna be almost an immediate lead here they're almost one round from taking this yep and now they're two kills up they have four ultimates and again we'll see if Astro denies another ace they actually denied it from Hayes last time as well but not sure they'll see Astro gonna get one there's another hunter's fear but I don't think it's gonna be enough unless Lux is able to pop off here we just saw Hayes pop off the round before, but now that top fragger again, top in the lobby, trading back and forth with Mitchell here. Already taken offline, so the pressure, but no, Omi able to find that headshot. Scout picks up Omi, so the spike can be planted, but a 2v1 Brimstone and Rays. I mean, these are two of the scariest people to go up against. Scout able to find one. Is Scout? No, Mitchell able to find another elimination onto Scout. It's going to be 12 versus 8 here in favor of Sacramento. This could be our final round, folks. That could, that could have been the penultimate round. It could have been, and I was really worried there for a second. We have not seen many of those showstoppers land, and Mitchell not going to find one there, but that's great communication. Oni does trade their life, and it says, you know, behind you, behind you, behind you, something like that, probably. I'm just imagining what their comms are like, and immediately Mitchell fires it, is able to win the firefight. And like you said, one round away, and now Homie's decided, you know what, I'm not even going to bother with firefights. I'm just going to spam away with this Odin. I got one kill. wasn't able to find a second one, but... If you're gonna play the sage, why not, right? Just, just why not? You might as well. The Odin, my favorite gun. In my, my, uh, everyone knows my favorite gun in the game. And if you can't why? tell, absolute sarcasm. I, I can't stand <laughs> the gun. I'm a huge fan of the Spectre. That's <laughs> yeah. actually my favorite weapon. But the Odin is nothing short of a nightmare to go up against. And I think that maybe it'll work out. You know, if you're not hitting your shot super consistently, you've only got to hit a couple with the Odin before an enemy really goes down. Astro now able to secure two eliminations very early on. Three v five, of course, in favor. Going to use both the firewall and the hot hands to heal up here trying to get to that full health. Noro able to find the headshot onto Omi so that Odin taken out of the fight. Mitchell, however, picks up Noro off the back of it. Scout and Shiloh, the sole survivors here. And this, I mean, 2v4 in favor of what could be our winning team. Things are about to be disastrous for Midland, who started off so strong. They're so close to a loss already. They are, and now they're going to use the Omen Teleport as well as the Owl Drone, but I'm not sure if they're going to be able to find enough. They're on attack, the drone's going to be taken out. There's zero Neural Theft, so if they get one more kill, the Cypher can use the ult. And they still have the Brimstone Orbital Strike, oh. so, yep, there's the Orbital Speaking Strike. That's probably going to lock things up, and yep, there it, is. it is, wow. Uh, I mean, there was a trade there at the end. The Brimstone actually ended up dying. Oni did not live throughout that, but gets the final kill, and what a comeback from Sacramento State. I shouldn't say that I'm surprised at all based on their performance last week. I think we expected them to come a little bit hotter out of the gate, but I said it at halftime that Bind is a defensive side of map, and look what happens once they switch to defense. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's clearly what they were waiting for. They all of a sudden come back to life. The defense comes out stronger than ever. They're able to secure a phenomenal victory. And Midland, they have the potential, clearly. I also think they're a defense-based team because that's really when they started to shine on their offense. They fall apart just a little bit, but of course, Bind is a weird map. Every map has its advantages and disadvantages. And like you said, Bind, a defense-based map. So especially if Midland was bad at, if they were bad at offense, 
And this is a defensive-based map. I mean, that's two against them, so possibly just not the best luck they had. Yeah, and this was Sacramento State 2's map choice. They did want to play on mine first, so now that they have that out of the way, if you're thinking, if you're mid-lane, you're thinking, like, we kept it close. It's only a five-round differential, and we had the lead for a good while, so we're going into our own choice, which is going to be Ascent. Um, but they're actually going to start an attack for that, so... That might be a bit of a disadvantage. You know, you always talk about, like, is it more important to choose the map versus which side you start on? Um, they're already down one in the series. Sure, they are going to be where they feel most comfortable, but they're going to be starting off an attack where they seem to struggle a bit more than their defense. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. And I think the biggest thing is Noru. I mean, Noru has, I yeah, believe, yeah, seven more kills than everyone else on the team. Meanwhile, on the other side of Sacramento State 2, they have two players that are both in 20 kills each, about... 25 23 so that's a very little difference there i think we saw this last week actually the team that sacramento state played montclair where they had a reina player uh, whose name i'm not remembering right now but i'll remember it after the break eventually of but course. they it was like they lived and died by how well that reina did when yeah, they were doing absolutely. well they did really the team did well and it's the same thing here with Noro. Noro, an excellent mm -hmm. player but you cannot be the only person who is popping off on your team you have to have someone who's a little bit under you and helping you as well yeah, no, I could not agree more. Every team, as I always say, is strong as the weakest link. And Noro may be the strongest, but of course, somebody else has got to be that weakest. The rest of these teams, the rest of these teammates have to be playing up to par with their best player. And we're going to see these best players coming back in just a little bit after this break. If you're just now joining us, you are, of course, watching the NECC Valorant second week. And this is going to be a little reminder. Drink some water. Check your posture. I think we're all probably slouching, uh, myself included. But give that a look, guys, just before we go to this break. We'll see you guys in just a couple of minutes. Valorant, I mean, there is so much left to be played tonight. Don't miss out on it.
Welcome back, everybody. I'm, I hope you missed us as much as we missed you guys. I hope you missed this Valorant game that really started off very close. We saw the team that we thought was going to come in very strong. They ended up losing a little bit, of course. Sacramento State, their second team, I actually found out during the break. And Midland going up against them. Going to be on that losing side of that first round. Moving into what is one of my personal favorite maps, what I always call the map, the face of Valorant. And one that I know my co-caster here does not like too particularly much. It's going to be Ascent. It's not that I dislike Ascent, I think it's a very good map, it's just I've seen it so much, I feel like it is kind of the standard map you see in best of ones in Valorant right now. Uh, this is a best of three, so we did see it a little bit later, but it is going to be played nonetheless. And if you're just joining us right now, it is Midland University versus Sacramento State Hornets Gold or Sacramento State 2, as we will probably refer them to, because that's a lot easier to remember than Hornets Gold. And we're going to go straight... <laughs> into that agent draft in Sacramento State, if you're just joining us again. They were able to come back pretty decisively from a big uh, deficit to win the last map, which was Bind 13-8. to eight. We'll see if that continues. And, oh my god! Seth, oh, no it's way! Happened. No it's way! Happened. No way! Yo. Wait, wait, wait! Wait, that's gonna be that's gonna be Midland picking up Scout on the Yoru. Something that we joked about, talked about. We saw a tease of it on that last game. They were so close to locking it in. They chose not to, but here it's locked in. You cannot go back from this. 
Yep, it is permit. It is official. The contract has already been signed, and there is no renegotiation. Oh. As the rest of the agents come in. It uh, looks like for the most part. All right, so yeah. Shallow Ask swapping on the brimstone. This is really interesting. Reyna, who we talked about already, dramatically nerfed into the ground. We're going to see the Reyna coming out from Astro off of the Phoenix, I believe. Mitchell now on Phoenix from Rays. So a lot of swaps coming out on the side of Sacramento, but also some Midland swaps as well. Shiloh, who was on that Omen, going to be on that uh, Brimstone now. What, who was on Killjoy, now going to be on Cypher. And I think, other than that Yoru swap, which we already made a huge deal about, I think Lux, yeah, Lux was on Rays and Nora was on that Phoenix. But, I mean, we're seeing quite a few swaps here. I mean, this is really going to shift some momentums. Yeah, full sale swaps for the most part. Um, I'm trying to think of like Hayes swapped onto the Killjoy, so no more Cypher. Uh, Astro is not going to be playing the dual state where before they're going to be on the arena. And I'm very surprised about this. Um, we talked about this before the show as well. And the thing that basically we all agreed upon was the, the, the basement for playing arena, like at a lower tier, has gotten a lot higher. But the ceiling for playing here at higher tiers has gotten a lot lower. She is. A lot less survivable, especially in like clutch situations where she could try to one v four. If you don't know what's happened to her, basically she has two less soul orbs that she can get per round, and both of them are double as expensive. So it's a two for one in the worst kind of way. Yeah, and it really is. <laughs> besides the swap right now, so we're gonna see Sacramento State on the defense first. Sacramento on the defense, which we saw is really how they secured themselves that victory on Bind just a couple of minutes ago. And there's a lot of swaps coming out here, so I think we're going to see some serious momentum changes. We see a raise there. Lux is going to be using that aggression very early on. One of their grenades getting themselves in the high ground. And Mitchell trying to play this corner. It's going to be a 2v1 here. A Cypher and a Yoru versus a Phoenix. Oh, and Scout going to be able to secure that first blood there. On the Yoru, already working out so much better. Noro able to find Astro as well. And Astro picks up Lux with the headshot. A 3v4. Make it a 3v3 as Hayes is able to secure another elimination the spike carrier that's going to be what right now carrying the spike they are in critical conditions that spike could fall at any possible moment and that would really put a gear in the plans of our attacking team and that's the thing like we, we've seen the sage come out consistently from omi so if they're in situation they would have that healing orb still and that would help keep what alive but because of that they're gonna have to play a lot more cautious you see they haven't really committed to a point just yet it looks like they're going towards tree on a as well as they have someone near long it's gonna be their yoru and oh oni you are in a world of heart yeah, really indeed, in a world of hurt. Going to be a critical condition. Can be healed up a little bit by Omi, I believe. They've got some cooldowns online there. The pressure going to be nothing short of hyper-aggressive now. And Scout going to be able to... I mean, you knew Oni was there stuck in hell. You're going to be able to find that elimination. Omi picks up one, so it's going to be that two to two. And I mean, they're both... I mean, everybody's almost full health. Both these teams have two players, a Killjoy and a Sage up against... Okay, a Sage up against a Brimstone and a Yoru. The aggression has to come out, and it has to be nothing short of flawless. We're going to see a great, a great floor coming out there, able to freeze things up a little bit. One elimination from Omi, the wall bang onto Scout, but the spike already planted. Shiloh finds Omi. That's going to be a secured round already for Midland. And there's just an unfortunate rotation there by Sacramento State. Yeah, if they didn't put that heal orb onto Omi, they probably would have been a much better situation. That heal orb was still online, and Omi wasn't able to get it off. Also, was caught with the reload. So just a few, a series of unfortunate events is basically the way I would describe that round because that was very winnable for them, but not quick enough. And because of that, they did lose the first round, but this is something we've been seeing a bit more from teams. The idea of, do you want to buy during that second round and try to force it even after losing the first one? Or do you wait for the third round where you can go for the full buy? And here we're going to see that Sacramento State, they are going to risk it for the biscuit here. They are going to go with a lot of stingers. Yeah, a lot of stingers coming out. We talked about we didn't see a lot of stingers early on. And this is really an idea, like you said, we've seen tossed around a lot in Valorant recently. Just buy what you can in the second round and hope that it ends in your favor. Or do you wait for that third round and really try to secure something off the back of it? Astro almost taken out immediately by Sacramento there. Going to find an hour, excuse me, by Midland. What? Able to pick up Mitchell, though, just standing in the cloud there. Hiding in that darkness. Omi able to find Noro. Both Phoenix is taken offline. And Arena on the side of Sacramento able to secure a little bit more health. What finds Hayes with that Spectre early Early on and the aggression nothing short of incredible coming out i think we're really seeing midland start to beat sacramento with their own game here and i think it might be the composition i mean yoru is someone kind of an unknown uh you know variety here so he's still pretty brand new and he's a bit stronger now or at least he's a bit more useful in terms of information and reyna just is weaker than she's ever been so it's not great for the side of sacramento state to stick with this oh. comp and now they're going to lose their sage yeah, and of course, that, that one of those things about Valorant, a little bit like a couple of games I'm sure you are all very familiar with when you lock a, in the agent in, you don't get to re-pick. You've...
game. You've got to come out stronger than ever, and you've got to just play it all the way through, win or lose. And as we see, I mean, we commented on the Reina as soon as it was picked. I, I don't think it's going to be working out here. I think Sacramento has really given themselves a massive disadvantage by picking this agent. Yeah, the fact that they're already down 2-0 on defense is a bit alarming, and it's still pretty early, but the Reina hasn't really gotten... Anyway, I just actually gotten two kills, but like you're you're not seeing like the aggressive play that you can because you only that have. Feast or famine. It's not you can't do it as well, right? Because right. there's so many less orbs that you can absorb. The the one upside is that if you do damage to anyone who dies, then you can get an orb off of them instead of having to get the actual kill. But it's just it's risk versus reward, and mm. the reward is so much slimmer nowadays. And so was the risk that they also just tried that last round didn't work out for them, and they're gonna have to settle with Mitchell on a Marshall. Yeah, Mitchell on the Marshall, able to just barely be saved there by their own firewall, I believe. Able to find the elimination onto, or excuse me, no, Noro took out Lux. So that's that's gonna be a that's gonna be a team kill there. Noro able to find Mitchell there in the mix-up. So definitely giving themselves a mild disadvantage, but two already being eliminated on the side of Sacramento. We see Midland, they're still up, at least for a moment. Never mind, never to scratch that. It's gonna be a 2v2, a critical health brimstone, and a sage going up against that Yoru, full health still, and that brimstone. So we're gonna see Oni and Chilo going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and then Omi playing playing that wild card, but now, I mean, Midland, they've got a wild card of their own, bringing Scout out on this Yoru. Yeah, but the superior firepower on the side of Minlin is just going to put them in such a big advantage. You saw that the health orb was given to Oni, so they are to stay alive, but they haven't been able to pick up any of the guns on the ground. And a Frenzy, like, now they get a Bucky, but there actually was, I think, a Vandal lying pretty nearby. There it is, so now we know that they picked it up. But So now they've got a little bit of a chance here, but it's a 2v1, and Shadow still has all of their abilities, so the incendiary can just go on to the point. They actually have their orbital strike, so they can just sit back Wait for the Diffuse to come through and use it there. Yeah, I definitely think that's, I mean, that's going to be the smartest play. It really would just make things easy. It would help you secure a third round. And like you said, Sacramento doing so poorly on defense here. This is looking like it could be three rounds in a row. This could spell nothing short of disaster. And that, yeah, that's really going to do it. Three for Shiloh. Doesn't need to use the Orbital Strike or any of the other abilities left. <laughs> so that's just a great round for their own economy, but just a great round for the team in general. And now for the first time in the game, we're going to be able to see... A full buy from Sacramento State. And they had the resurrection, but I, one of my biggest uh, concerns last time was they didn't really use it super effectively. They didn't use right. it quick enough. I, it's an ultimate you get to kind of hold on to a little bit longer. It's very situational versus, I don't know, a run at back where you just kind of throw it out in a round. Right, and right. If it doesn't get value, it's whatever. But it, if you're being too protective over it, then you're never going to find anything with it. And last time, it worked out all right. I only really remember one resurrection coming out the entirety of Vine. So that just there only was one. They've been. Yeah, maybe there only was one. I, I honestly don't remember. I just wasn't enough. Yeah, no, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, there really was a, only one res that came out from Omi there on Vine. I completely agree. It's, you, you know, you can't just be using it willy nilly, but you can't be using it once an entire mm -hmm. game either. That's definitely a mistake that we saw come out that first time around. A 5v5 starting out strong. A lot of vandals online. I mean, it, I, I had nine of them out of 10 players here. So we see the aggression coming out. The flash comes from Mitchell, able to find what, but going to give their own life. Taken out by that brimstone. Shia Lux able to pick up Astro, immediately flipping things back in favor of a Midland. Once again, Scout finds Oni in this round, already almost over here for Sacramento. I'm gonna break the door, they're gonna lose their Sage, no Resurrection, no Hope, just a Killjoy, who is currently on the other side of the map. And oh. if I was Taze, it doesn't, I was gonna say hide, but instead Scout is gonna take that long distance duel, I was just watching on the minimap, basically going the full distance that a Vandal can fire away with and might have caught Taze off guard and... I mean, we saw a great comeback from Sacramento State last time, but this is a pretty nice lead that's being built up by Midland. Not only points are round-wise, but, I mean, economy-wise, ultimate-wise, they have so much to use. And I, I really want to see this Dimensional Drift come out. I actually have not seen it yet as a spectator or as a caster. And I, I, I know they've changed it a little bit, like how it's viewed by teammates as well. So I really want to see how this ultimate can help gather information when they decide to use it. Yeah, no, I definitely think that's something to watch out for as well. We're going to see the run it back come out from Noru right away. Able to get a little bit of information, but not going to be able to secure any eliminations off the back of it quite yet. Taking a little bit of extra damage, but things not looking exactly bleak. Scout, I mean, I just want to talk about them really fast during this team fight. On the first on the first game there on Bind, they really didn't do much. We didn't see a lot of high value coming out. They got some kills, but really weren't making a name for themselves. They weren't being that top fragger. But currently, the top fragger in the lobby with eight eliminations and nothing short of just 
Great gameplay so far, but Oni with the Sheriff, however, able to turn things around. I honestly give this round pretty much right now to Scout and Shiloh because they really are the last two to be alive on this team time and time again. But Omi committing that resurrection very early on, much earlier than we saw last time, bringing Astro back to life, which is... An unconventional pick because, you know, Reyna is kind of not great right now, but they're going to go for it. They're going to take the risk. Orbital Strike coming out now. Oni able to find Scout. It's going to be a 3v1. A 1v1 as Shiloh picks up. Not a single, but a double kill. Astro able to find that elimination onto Shiloh as well. I, I'm really not sure they're going to be able to get the defuse off in time. If they are, it's going to be a close one. The timer really ticking away, and it's going to be, what, 2.66 seconds left on the clock. But Sacramento finally, for the first time in five rounds, flipping things in their favor. Well, Reyna might be weaker, but you know what's still very strong? Her ultimate. It still gives you a much better rate of fire, and your enemies are highlighted, so they're able to win the 1v1. And I think the biggest misplay was Wait that Orbital Strike that we saw come out yep. from Kylo. Agreed. Uh, just, just play back. I mean, we talk about this. Like, it's the same thing of Hunter's Fury. Just play back. Wait for the defuse. It's an area of effectability. Or you know where they're going to be. Yeah, exactly. So even if you don't get the kill, you zone them out, and then you can re-engage. Instead, try to be a too a bit too aggressive, a bit too overeager, and they lose oh! the first round. And speaking of overeager, wow. Yeah, definitely not a good look. I want to point out, we have two operators online. Mitchell with an operator of their own and Lux with an operator. So not putting the pressure on. Scout got a dimensional drift right out of the point. Looking for that spike plan. Two operator kills in the feed. Going to be able to get a little bit of recon, but nothing of use there from Scout. I also found out recently there's a quality of life thing where Scout uh, recently, until this latest update, was able to body block people while in ultimate, which is hilarious. But no, apparently can't do that anymore. So Yoru not allowed to do that um, these days. So that was taken out of the game. But now, I mean, already in favor of Sacramento, but Scout got an eye, yep, onto Oni, able to find that elimination very early on. Gonna put a lot of pressure out, but the defender, Sacramento Mitchell in particular, with that operator really putting in the work. And that was really impressive at Mitchell. I'm not sure if it was communication or just kind of guesstimation, but they knew that there was someone behind that box. They got a wall bang, but it wasn't enough to kill them. Then able to just go in, get the kill, finish up that round, and now Sacramento State, they're bringing it back a little bit. But the most impressive thing beyond that was the fact that Oni stayed alive for so long. Was able yeah. to get a kill out of it too. Uh, maybe you want to hold on to that orbital strike a little bit longer if possible, but because of the time they were able to kill off the clock, it was enough for the rotation to come out from Sacramento State, which has sometimes been a weakness of them of not rotating quick enough, and now economies have completely flip-flopped their gambit from round two where they bought hasn't bit them too much in the butt, and look at all the weapons they have compared to what Midland is running. Yeah, Midland very low on the economy, and they're really going for a very... A very poor run here, but Lux able to get rid of the Operator straight away. Possibly might even go grab it. We just saw them with one of their own a minute ago, and why would you not grab an Operator at the end of the day? It's probably one of the most busted weapons in the game. They know somebody's around the corner now that that Bomb Buddy's been taken out. They've got to put the pressure on, try to find maybe another elimination with the Sheriff, but no, we're going to decide to swap to that Operator. Probably going to go for some kind of quick scope. Noro able to find not one, but two eliminations with that Sheriff, and Hayes able to pick up Lux, shooting just a little bit too far to the right, finding a double kill in the mix up, but Shiloh finds the elimination. Scout picks up one of their own onto Omi, the attackers able to secure another round in their favor. Sacramento, they had the momentum for just a moment, but now they've let it slip through their fingers. Remember when I said that sometimes Sacramento State 2 is a little bit late on the rotation? That was a perfect example of it right there. I mean, there, there were two or three people they saw on A, and yet the, the cavalry just wasn't there in time when they finally yeah. got there. The, they were expecting that, so they were able to kind of flank them out. And despite Hayes having a great straight chance for to get two kills there, the reload is what kills them at the very end. They aren't able to get their gun up back in time. And now, flip-flopping economies. They were up. Now they're down. Now they've got Bucky's. Oh, speaking of being down, Noro able to find Mitchell once again. And that's I think that's the third round so far that Mitchell's been the first one to fall. So definitely not a good look on the side of Sacramento. Just maybe poking a little bit too forward, being a little bit too eager. And now we're going to hear the ultimates coming out just a little bit. It looks like that was going to be the Cypher ultimate from the side. Oh, I mean, the only Cypher in the game on the side of Midland there. They know the Sage is in the corner. Noro's going to put the pressure down. But Omi able with the Bucky to find one. Make it two eliminations. But Scout able to find that headshot kill coming through a 3v2 in in favor of our attackers once again. Sacramento, they've got a Reyna, they've got a Brimstone, they've got a Dream, but with a Scout, I mean, with a Yoru and a Phoenix alive, yeah, this is going to be nothing short of a disaster. A very recently nerfed Reyna. Going to have to take out three eliminations. That's going to be very difficult to do. Able to find one, but not two more. Another round in favor of Midland. Yeah, able to take out one more, but it's still not enough. And I, actually, they don't grab the op. So they're going to have to buy there, so that's huge. Um, even though they lose that round for Sacramento State, the Noro just not quick enough to get grab the operator after it had been dropped. 
So that's a gun that they, they at first they said looks like they were gonna buy it, but I guess they decided to save their economy. So no operators on either side, just a lot of assault rifles, mostly vandals, with two phantoms, one on either side, and that's big um, that they got that operator out of their hands. Obviously, again, it's a very similar situation where they're down a lot, but we saw that Sacramento State they were able to mount a comeback despite having a not great time before the swap. So even though they did start on defense first, this might be where they start bringing it back. Absolutely, gonna commit a running back very early on from Noro, able to really look for one elimination, trying to put the pressure on, but the running back, able to find Astro, actually, I thought they were gonna lose that matchup. Gonna be taken out by the teammates, but now it's a little bit too late. And that Sage Ultimate not online quite yet. It's gonna be a running back take, or not a running back, excuse me, a party, a showstopper, there it is. A showstopper taken out right away. Again, we've not, I mean, really, we've seen one of those so far. Four have been popped, but only one has been able to find an elimination. It's the one that they had to dance in someone's head to hit, and they still got two kills off of it. But yeah, again, it's not going to work out, but the numbers are in Midland's favor, and they do have an orbital strike, so I'd really love to see them do something similar where, or not do something similar, do the opposite of what they did last time. Save the orbital strike if needed. I mean, use the Euro ultimate for information. That's what you should be committing first, not the orbital strike. Yeah, of course, I agree, because you, I mean, you can know exactly where to put the orbital strike. But now we're going to hear the ultimate come out now from Scout, probably trying to find any kind of recon. Putting the pressure on, looking for information as much as they can find. Omi able to find scouts. It's maybe a 2v2 once again. And Sacramento, this is really where they've started to crumble. This is really when they start to lose these matchups. Omi trying to find a kill, but no, Nora with the wall bang. Able to find another elimination. Midland, I mean, they are really taking the lead on this one. Yeah, and here's the biggest thing right now for Midland. We talked about how Nora needs help. Look at the scoreboard right now. Scout has completely stepped it up. Shiloh, not too far behind all three of them. At double digits no one on the side right now of sacramento state is at double digits so they're finally able to find more than one person who is fragging out and i think their swap their comp is just a bit better scout on yoru is getting a lot more value than astro on the reina they had that one good round of the empress that helped secure things but beyond thing beyond that the yoru has just gotten so much and i think a big thing that we never really think about is the fake out you know when you send out fake footsteps just the paranoia it creates it's so big for you as an attacker yeah, the fake out or really nasty move, one of my favorites in the game, even though it was just recently added, I love the idea of playing that mental game as much as that physical game. And those fake out steps, I mean, they do nothing but make the enemy team paranoid. Like you said, they're great in that ability. And now, I mean, I, I feel like Scout, I, I can't praise this player enough because game one, on Vine, I mean, things were sloppy. We weren't seeing good plays. We weren't seeing a lot of good. We were just seeing a lot of misplays. Come on, I shouldn't say sloppy. That's rude of me. I'm horrible at this game. I think we've been seeing a lot of misplays here from Scout, but now all of a sudden, on this Yoru, I mean, they have been nothing short of amazing. Noro and what able to pick up two eliminations while I've been talking. A 3v4 again in favor of Midland. They have just, I don't know if they swapped up their comp. I mean, they swapped up their comp. I meant to say comms. I don't know if they've swapped up their comms or if they're just playing a little bit better. They're a little bit warmed up, but they have been nothing short of amazing so far. They are indeed. That's going to be a trade, but it's still going to be a numbers advantage for Midland. There is the resurrection online if they can find one, but again, the rotation. Look at where they are right now. They have not moved, even though there was only one person against like four. They are going to get able to get a trade, so Hayes is going to be able to pick up that Vandal. And um, there's no ultimates like to contest the point if they take it over. So right now, actually, Midland's not in the best scenario that they've been, but you see how they're doing this? They're splitting angles. One person all the way back at the arch, and then one under hell. Yep, and that's exactly it. You cover both your entrances. You know exactly where the enemy team's going to be approaching. And Scout able to find Omi. And what picks up Hayes? Again, we saw a great lead coming out from Sacramento, but at the end of the day, Midland, they're just able to win these firefights. Time and time again, it comes down to these firefights. In Sacramento, they're just not hitting their shots like they were last week. Yeah, I think you gotta commit to one and then hope you can turn around and hit the other. Yeah, there honestly. you stop the hesitation from Hayes. They are looking at hell and then immediately turn around once they lose Omi. But instead of committing to just continuing to go to hell and trying to force them out, they end up having that split second decision that ends up costing them their life. So there's a great chance for them to even things up um, or at least take another round and get a bit closer. But this lead now is really getting great for Midland. We always talk about like what you need going into the break. I think eight to four is kind of like where you want to be at minimum. I mean, best case scenario, right? And to two, yeah. I mean, honestly, it's not every day that I tell somebody going to hell probably would have been better, but I think that's exactly <laughs> what Hayes should have done there was go right to hell and really put the pressure onto Scout, turn it into a 1v1 rather than that 2v1 because there was just such little reaction time. They turned around. I mean, they turned their back right to the very bullet that was going to be the one to take them out. I, I feel I feel like Sacramento might be nervous in this matchup. I don't know if it's because Midland has taken such a large lead, but I feel like we're seeing misplays that we really didn't see last week. 
Absolutely. And again, I think a big part of it comes down to that arena nerf. Um, it's yeah. just you can't yeah. play it the same way. And you see that Astro is really not doing as well as we expected them to do 5 and 10. So right now it's a 0. 0.5 KDA. And obviously, like, you can't really prepare for that patch as it just comes out today. But you had time. You knew that it was going to be happening. So maybe try to swap things up. Go with someone you're more comfortable with, like a jet instead. Yeah, this is already nothing short of a disaster. That's gonna be, this could be a flawless round, really. We see three eliminations already in favor of Midland, and they're already, I mean, they're they're looking to end this 10 and two going into halftime. I mean, that's gonna put them three rounds away. They're gonna have to play three defensive rounds and win, and then they can take this map and push us all the way to map three, which is, don't tell me, split. Blitz. Yes, got it, just Jinx. needed a minute. Yeah, and if they're, they're pushing for that third map, it, it looks inevitable unless we see some amazing things happen after halftime. We're only one round away from, there is going to be a full buy from Sacramento State, so if they're going to get some momentum, now is the time. Um, but right now, with this operator that's going to be coming online from Lux, they are at a pretty big disadvantage, not only round-wise, but just how, is, how things have been going down. Like you said, they, they look a bit shaky, a bit out of sorts, and I can't remember the last time they've been able to get like a bunch of kills none of them are past 10 right now yeah i think you can't I, honestly i think you can't remember a time because it hasn't happened across these 11 rounds that we've seen so far they've gotten i mean less than 30 eliminations and we're looking at the other side of i mean looking at the other side of midland they've got 30 eliminations across the top three fraggers so it's like right now we're seeing a massive elimination difference i'm not going to do mental math on stream because i know i'll get the number <laughs> wrong and chat's going to flame me but now Noro taking out of the fight right away oni and astro able to pick up one oni picking up two now so that's going to be a great possibly flawless round coming out from sacramento here going into halftime nine and three i mean i thought they had a mountain to climb last time this is this is going to be almost impossible here they're really going to have to come back like never before it is a flawless round at the end of the day, and you know, you're able to take one back, so could be 10 to 2, it's 3 to 9 instead, but that's still not a great look for you if you're Sacramento State 2. The thing is, again, like that that one round win, I talk about it so much, it's like, oh, it's one round, what does it matter? But momentum, it, it swings like a pendulum course, so quickly, course. and once you get that train started, it's gonna just keep going, so if they can build off of that as they swap over to attack for Sacramento State, they could get another great comeback. I mean, I, I think they came, it was 8-4, it was right? before we swapped and then it was just all sacramento state from there yeah. so nine three that's only one round difference from what we saw last time on binds yeah but i i still think the reina i mean it's really the ball and chain of this matchup and that's nothing against astro specifically we've seen some great frags coming out but just reina was nerfed into the absolute ground earlier today so now bringing out that character here i mean it might be a comfort pick but i mean there gets to a point where even a comfort pick feels almost unplayable Especially when you know that they're not going to be nearly as effective as they used to yeah, be. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, why don't why not just run the same uh, duelist lineup you had last time with the Phoenix and the Rays? Just keep it the same as uh, Bind yeah. was. Yeah, I'm a very I'm a very big fan of the belief that it's not broke, don't fix it. And I feel like we saw something that came out from Sacramento. They ended up st absolutely stomping the matchup there, and then they choose to change their lineup. Maybe they think it's going to work on the map a little bit better. And right now they're up in the offense here. If they can win this round, like you said, all about momentum. If they win this first round, it'll help them secure that second round at the very least before it's going to give that losing team a full buy. Hayes able to take Shadow out of the fight for B2 here. They know where both these defenders are going to be. The spike already planted. The timer has begun. This is, yeah, this is looking like this round should end in favor of Sacramento State here, but I mean, we've seen them, yeah, I was going to say, we've seen them lose some pretty wacky matchups already, but now they are going to be able to secure that first round after halftime. Four to nine, like you said, only down by one compared to what we saw in the last round or the last map, and they ended up winning that. It here's my question now. After losing that round, does Midland buy? They haven't so far when they lose the first round, and yet they've still won a few here and there. Uh, we saw that in Sacramento State. They went for that gambit, and it didn't pay off this time. It looks like Midland is not going to follow suit, except for possibly Noru with the shorty. So that'd be a very interesting play to see if it gets value. But we, we saw this, remember, last time. I think it was on Bind. They won the first round of that entire map, and they went into a bunch of classics, and somehow still came out of that as the losers. And a big part of it was that they played two aggro and didn't think about like you know playing the classic at range where it's the weakest right now. I think it's alternate fire is much stronger than just going into the firefight. This time there's snow gate very aggressively onto A and there isn't gonna be anyone there except the brimstone, but look at the rotations that are coming out right now from the defenders. They might try to go all the way around and try to go through the archway. 
Yeah, I mean, that's definitely going to be a strategy here. I think the pressure needs to come out from Sacramento like we saw earlier on. I feel like we can't say this enough. When they push in, when they're hyper aggressive, that's really when we see them at their best, at their highest performance. And now, I mean, they're playing a little bit aggressive, but I feel like not nearly as aggressive as they need to be. Mitchell able to pick up two eliminations in the mix up there, but Scout gonna be able to find Hayes in that back line and that Killjoy, kind of their only back line defense. Gonna be sending the Sage in as well. Not a great idea, but Omi is able to pick up that elimination and secure another round victory for Sacramento. That's gonna give them, like you said, and momentum is nothing short of completely in their favor. Do you know how many rounds they've won in a round? Uh, run in a row now? That's gonna be three, I believe. Yeah, three, and that is a good amount of rounds to start out with after the swap. One of them being that last one before the swap, but that's two now. And I mean, things are gonna get a little bit more dicey because it does allow Midland to buy, and you know their win condition is only four more rounds, so they don't have to take those big risks. But if somehow, some way, Sacramento State is able to win this one out thrifty wise. That it just that just propels them into actually being able to take this map and really being able to come back in this series, uh, not in the series, but like just in the map and win the series. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, they're only this map away from winning. They've got to win, you know, I think eight more in a row without really dropping four in that process. So they're really going to have to have over a 50% win rate moving forward. And as Oni is taken out, Scout able to find that headshot standing on the box. I mean, that's going to be great, of obviously, in favor of Midland. Something I talked about during the break that I'll bring up now to all of you watching is I think Valorant is so fascinating because it's not about necessarily having a high ground. It's about being slightly more vertical than your opponent. Like, at the end of the day, standing on a box could be the thing that makes or breaks a gunfight for you. And I think that is just absolutely crazy. And I mean, there you see, like, just a little bit of a high difference between where you are in market versus where you are in mid. And that can be the difference maker there. And it's also put up... Uh, Midland, pretty big for the first time in a while. It's a 5v3, and I don't think they're gonna be able to do anything. They can kill, they can't kill the Sage. The Sage is still alive, and that's the bomb carrier. So that's huge. Especially, I don't know how close she is, oh. but... I was gonna say, I don't know how close she is to res, if they're able to stay alive and get the res, that could really turn things around, but now it's a 4v2, and I don't know if it's winnable. 4v2, the raise is pretty low, pretty critical condition, but you've gotta get rid of the raise and one more to tie... Okay, never mind. Yeah, this is, this is, uh... Not looking great. Omi able to secure one elimination there. Gonna heal themselves back up, but are gonna be taking a lot of damage. Somebody's right behind them. They go for the freeze there on the ground. Oh, and Scout with the headshot. Omi definitely had some great reaction time there. Able to slow down what for just a moment, get themselves into the rest of the room. And that was definitely a good look, but you know, if the rest of your team was alive, probably would have looked a little bit better. Yeah, I think that was a good, like, just what is in the split. I can't talk. Tongue twister. Split de second decision. That's what I'm trying to say. When they decided just to go to the point and take it there, even though they know knew there was someone behind them, because maybe they could try to clear it out. The high ground, they almost won that gunfight against the Yor. They almost won it against Scout. But you see there the difference between an SMG versus an assault rifle. The Vandal of almost always going to win, especially if you're able to hit one shot early on or just get that headshot that instantly melts them. So now that win condition getting closer and closer right now for Midlands. They only need three more to take it home. Yeah, like you said, three more to take it home and bring us all the way to that map three, which is going to be split, of course. And so, I mean, the pressure is going to come out there for both these teams. Sacramento putting up a much weaker game than we saw last week in Midland. Like you said, this is kind of their first week showing their names, showing their faces here, putting on quite the show for us. Oni able to find that wall bang headshot onto Scout, the top fragger on the side of Midland to take it out. Currently the most eliminations in lobby by five, sitting at 20. So they've already dropped a 20 bomb here in this matchup. And I think if we see these rounds very close and Scout isn't the first one eliminated i i could realistically see a 30 bomb here if these next couple of rounds go in favor of uh sacramento yeah it looks like this one is they are going to commit the lockdown just to try to clear out this point but as they're going to be taken out in the firefight they know that there is a cypher in the back but they're going to use their cypher cage to try to get out they are able to get two so now this is very winnable the question is do they use too much there i'm not yeah, sure i was I don't... gonna say that was a lot a lockdown for a 5v3, it's a very interesting play, and it does help secure them the round for sure. I, I guess the, the idea is they're in win-now mode, they really can't save too right, much more. Right. Their ult economy is still healthy, they still have 3-1 to one on the other side, only Noro has to run it back. And they might be able to get that Killjoy ultimate back pretty quickly, especially if they continue to win rounds in a row, and that was a big round because now it forces Midland to go for a light buy. Yeah, and like you said, they are in that fight or flight, that really instinct, we need to win right here, right now kind of situation, kind of mentality. So to see that coming out, definitely going to be a good look for them because, you know, obviously they've secured a round, it gives them a little bit of economy. Three ultimates online. We've seen them come back from the very depths of a matchup. So I think realistically speaking, Sacramento may be down, but they are not even close to out in this. We'll see how they play this one. I mean, again, the biggest thing is they cannot lose this thrifty round because they have lost a few thrifty rounds here and there. 
they really gotta just march in. They gotta be decisive. They have to be aggressive, and they're gonna commit the run it back here. The run it back coming through, able to pick up an elimination, but Luck's gonna be able to find Astro here. Arguably, you know, that weakest character taken out on the side. Not, of course, the player Astro, but right now, which is not good right now. I'm, I'm gonna repeat that all the time because she's really in a rough spot. Omi gonna commit that resurrection again onto Astro. They're gonna go for a full five. Astro taken out right away once again by Noro with that classic. They're able to put the pressure on, and now the spike has been planted, so the pressure is gonna be coming out even stronger from these defenders as they know their timer is ticking. Gonna be another takeout onto Shiloh and Noro not far behind. A 4v2, of course, in favor of this attacking team sacramento putting the pressure on bringing the heat once again looks like this might be another round in their favor momentum really starting to shift for sacramento here it's just scout and it's gonna have to back up because of that flash and there's gonna be their own oh. he's gonna be able to find one but hayes finish things up and hey, the numbers they're getting closer and closer that was again a save round so no harm, no foul for losing that for Midland, or not at least the biggest foul that they possibly could. And they're able to take out a few in the meantime, too, so that does force Sacramento State 2 to buy even more. So that, that's kind of a win-win-win, and also your ultimate bank, I mean, look, they completely flip-flopped on the side of Sacramento State. You have the orbital strike, and that's pretty valuable, especially if you it can stop a retake or a recontest from the spike, if they're trying to defuse it on the side of Midland, but you've got four things on your side right now, and... Unless the show, like, besides the showstopper, maybe not hitting its mark, all of them are pretty valuable. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to point out that uh, this has just been a much better game for Oni as a whole. They ended the last game with, I think, eight eliminations in total. They're currently sitting at 15 at the top of the leaderboard for Sacramento. So just a huge shout out there. A great turnaround on that Brimstone. And we talk about this a lot. And it seems to be happening weirdly often lately. You never expect Brimstone to be the top fragger for a team. No, but in this case, I mean, this is what we expected, so it was a bit surprising they didn't do as well last week, but Omi also has really picked it up. It's Agreed. right now in second with 13 and just got that kill there. Yeah, like you said, second with 13. They've now put themselves in that second position. Mitchell picks up Lux, and this looks like another round currently in favor of Sacramento. They'll run it back, gone. Scout able to take out Omi. The Resurrection not going to be online really anytime soon, so that's not something to be super worried about. And the spike almost made it to point. Mitchell going to pick it up and avenge that teammate there, trying to actually not plant the spike. Going to go for the elimination on to Scout. That top fragger taken offline. What gone as well this is going to be left in the hands of Noro, someone we saw put the pressure out earlier, but they're going to be taken out by Astro in that back line. Another round victory here for Sacramento, and I can't say enough momentum has been shifted yeah, it's been shifted i feel like for a while now this uh besides that round they lost where they couldn't buy because they were saving for the round after it i mean it, it's just been them in the driver's seat they've only lost one round out of the last hold on i'm trying to look at this out of the last seven they've won six um out of seven so you can just you can see the comeback is in the air the winds have changed it's the, it's the changing of the season seth it it's truly, truly beautiful 31 days until spring here in the U.S., but we now see that, uh, you know, they decided that this, 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 the winds have changed, the season's changing, that starts today. Because right now, Sacramento, they are coming back like crazy, like you said, five out of the last six rounds since halftime. The pressure has been nothing short of incredible. The economy is crazily in their favor. They are forcing short buys here from Midland every single round. And right now, Sacramento, they've got all the cards. They've just got to put them on the table. They do, and I mean, the ultimate bank, I said it was good for Midland, but now again, it's completely flip-flopped. Uh, they do lose, oh. they lose Omi, but oh my goodness, this might be the thrifty round they needed. The running back is online still, and if I'm Mitchell, just use that immediately. Yeah, so just, that way you just get use it. I'm thinking that exact same thing. Just put it out there, use that running back, try to find even one elimination to crack this right back open. There's going to be one elimination, no ID, the other Phoenix right on the other side of the wall. Noru does end up flashing himself, but finds the elimination onto Mitchell. It's going to be a one-to-one. -one. What versus Reina? here or what versus astro that cypher versus the reina reina able to make it to point first but uh, cypher maybe not noticing that this is happening on point quite yet yeah it seems like the cypher what does not realize it's at a but now they definitely do after the spike is planted so here's the two questions if you're reina how many leaders do you have and can you use them i think they already just committed one and do you commit the empress that's the biggest question yes they have two leaders actually so they have all their leaders left they only have one more solar they can gain, but it doesn't matter because either they win this fight or they don't. So it's all about timing that Leer correctly. The Neural Thoughts was already used. That's not going to be online, so it's going to be kind of just... See if they can out strategize each other. Honestly, if I'm Sacramento, run it. You pop the Empress and you get in there, but the Empress not even needed. Astro gonna turn that corner, immediate headshot onto what? And the score, again, folks, I mean, take a look at this. There was a massive lead early on. The score at one point was 9-2. to two. And now we see them coming all the way back. It's going to be 10 to 9. Still in favor of Midland, but Sacramento doing what they do best. The Sacramento 2 team, I mean, they just, they love to give us a comeback story. 
they love to play fear behind and they love to take it at the very end they love to win these games out i mean last week it was a bit more decisive after falling behind Agreed. a little bit this Agreed. week they've really been playing from behind but they're making it look good and believe again uh, the economies are good for both teams but what having to admit to the aries and this could actually be a huge play because they're going to be found out and they're just going to spam away yeah, absolutely. The pressure coming out here. It's going to be nothing short of aggressive. Like you said, with that spam, the Killjoy ultimate, we're going to commit to run it back as well. So ultimate's flying out left, right, and center here. Astro now putting the pressure out as much as they can. But with that Brimstone ultimate coming through, the the Killjoy ultimate also missed. We saw that very common strategy using that orbital strike and that orbital to take out that Killjoy ultimate, but he missed the Killjoy ultimate in the mix up there. What able to take out Astro. Omi finds what? Scout finds Mitchell and Hayes finds Stout. Lux finds Hayes off the back of it with a grenade there. And I think, I mean, that's going to be nothing short of a very lucky plant there coming out for Sacramento. They really should have lost almost all of that matchup there. Omi with the wall bang onto Noru, able to resurrect Hayes as well. Lux finds the wall bang onto Omi and, of course, is standing right there, able to take out that resurrected attacker. That's going to be an ultimate down the drain for Sacramento when I think they really needed it. Yeah, that resurrection, it was just a bit of a panic ultimate there. Uh, you are very vulnerable if you get resin and unlazy position like that so Omi they tried to do his best to save that round but instead it's going to be going to Midlands and I think the biggest thing there was it, it really comes down to Oni's positioning again that orbital strike that's your ace in the holder to make sure that the defuse does not come out and when you're playing that aggressively in the corner um I mean you're trying to just catch someone off guard but that time they turned around they were the ones caught off guard if they played at the back of Boathouse with their stage, it's like the one time I'm like, all right, you can play that same angle. It's all right, because there's two different doorways. So you can cover the left and the right. Instead, didn't do that. And that orbital strike isn't going to come out just yet. But it might be saved for today instead, or this round, to be precise. Yeah, I mean, this could be the penultimate round here. If we see Midland able to come out on top of things... I think they definitely, of course, could win the next round, but two ultimates, like you said, on the side of Sacramento, the Empress and the Orbital Strike still online, both great ultimates to clear a point and force the enemy team to kind of rotate and kind of fall into your hands, if you will. You can kind of force the fight from there. A lot of slow pace, a lot of slow play coming out. Everybody checking these corners, just looking. Even one elimination cracks this fight wide open for either of these teams. There's going to be a gunfight right here. It's going to be the... Oh, it's, yeah, okay. It's going to be the Oni, who I did not know was behind... Who's not... Who I did not know was behind Mitchell there on the Phoenix. It's going to be the Brimstone taking out the Yoru. Hayes able to find the Cypher as well. A 3v5. A lot of damage onto Hayes there. But even if they fall, they're still up in the numbers by one. This could be another winnable round here for Sacramento. Yeah, it is indeed. But they lose Omi, they lose their healer, they don't, also don't have the spike. The orbital strike is used very aggressively. It doesn't oh. find a kill. It's now a 3v2, and I think you have to kill... Oh. Maybe not. I was gonna say, you gotta commit the Empress. Now you don't really, but you gotta kill Shiloh. Oh. Two, Oni gets three, and that... It was so winnable for Sacramento State, and it they really do fuck up at the very end. But, like, you saw there that Midland actually created an opportunity for themselves that they really shouldn't have had. Yeah, no, that was definitely, uh... A lot of unique choices from both teams, and I mentioned it, I, I feel like these last couple of rounds, Sacramento has just been very lucky. I feel like there's things, very mild misplays coming out from the side of Midland that has really guaranteed these rounds for Sacramento, and now the score 10 to 11. Both these teams just a couple of rounds away from snatching a victory here. We're also getting danger close to overtime. Yeah, there's a lot of ultimates that will be online suited for Midland, so if they get a few more kills, get a few more ult ops. Alt orbs, they'll have a lot more utility. The Emperor still has not been used by Astro, but I think the problem is, you know, a lot of these rounds, like, they're not really able to find kills that they need, and this is a light buy for them, so we should, in theory, have this tied up 11 11, but I would not count it Midland ever. We've seen them do some crazy things with sheriffs. Yeah, the sheriffs, I mean, a gun that I, I feel I always personally underestimate, and then somebody just top frags with it and blows my mind every time, but I'm always surprised for some reason. I don't know. The sheriff is a gun that I think is always a great comeback potential weapon. Oni, however, taking out Scout, that 24 elimination player going to be taken out very early on. That's three eliminations already in favor of Sacramento. And, I mean, if, if Sacramento wins this, and then Midland wins even one more, that forces us into overtime. Yeah, it's a potential... Overtime situation, but that still has to be Sacramento coming all the way back. So they know that, like, again, it's like win now, Mobit. It's like win now, like Ultra. They cannot let it get to 12. I mean, it still like keeps them alive in the series if they're able to tie it to 12 too. But overtime gets so dangerous, so sloppy with how it can be, especially depending on what side you start with first. And if you start, you know, I mean, if, for example, if we see Sacramento State start on defense where they really didn't do that well. That could snowball them into just losing two rounds low and losing this game. But now they've tied it up after a flawless round. And imagine taking the lead 
on the penultimate round before you win the map. Yeah, that would that's be the one short. time. Yeah, I was gonna say that would be that would be nothing short of incredible. You have not had to lead the entire matchup, but then at the very end of things, like you said, that second to last, that almost final round, you take the lead for the first time, which is just absolutely mind blowing to consider. We saw kind of a weird short buy coming out there because they've got a very low economy in that credits department, but now they're also not going to be able to full commit their weaponry here. I think we're just seeing things on the up and up for Sacramento. They've got to secure two more rounds. Midland, I feel like if they lose this one, it's it's pretty much going to already be over. Yeah, so the question is, do you commit early here? Because you have your running back, you have your dimensional rift, so you have things you can use here if you're on the side of Midland, but you might want to try to save it for a rainy day or save it for, you know, another round after that. We've already seen the running back as well as the Killjoy locked and come out, so both teams are committing. Yeah, both teams are definitely committing to run it back down. There's going to be the Yoru getting a little bit of recon that you can't, obviously can't do much about it. Mitchell takes out Noru right away. Omi able to find what as well. Mitchell trying to find a double kill, but unable to do so. Scout picks up Mitchell there in the chaos. Going to be a 4v3 in favor, of course, of Sacramento. Trying to really put this round away in their favor and take the lead for the first time. Literally all of a cent, which is just mind-blowing again to consider. A great throw there coming out from Killjoy. Able to put a little bit of damage there. Going to put it just in that doorway. Some great lineups. Oni with the wall bang onto Scout. Going to put this even more in favor of Sacramento. Shiloh and Lux versus the world. They've got some eliminations. Shiloh almost has that ultimate. They've got a dream, but the pressure has to come out like crazy. Lux picks up Hayes in the mix up here, and Shiloh able to find Omi as well, taking it from a 4v2 to a 2v2. This is all of a sudden winnable. It is indeed. Now oh. to use the Empress, you know where Shiloh is. You don't have the spike. That's why it has not been planted. That spike was dropped earlier on by the Phoenix. Now there's the orbital strike. They're going to be able to back out of that, but with only 19 seconds left, they're no! going to spray through it. No way! Shiloh, what a mad lad, gets three on that round. Shiloh. And it all comes down to the fact that they didn't have that spike. If Mitchell had dropped it or given it to someone else earlier on, that would have been a round win for Sacramento State. But at best now, they can go to overtime. And Midland, they're looking to put this away. They're looking to force that map three. Just a mild misplay in map three on the, on the brink here. We need to see Midland win one more round. And we're going to go all the way to map three. Overtime at this point, a guarantee if even a single round comes out again from Sacramento. So now they really just, they need to push this into overtime because they lose this round. It's going to be over for them here on a center. We're going to go all the way to that third map. Yeah, if this, is, if this they couldn't get any longer, as, as if the series could not extend any more than it already has. But I mean, that's great because it's just been so low close, so it's just going so long. Again, they know what is there because they've tried the strategy a few times. Now they're just going to try to stay into the run it back, oh. but they're going to die. Yeah, there's going to be a trade there. What tries to, yeah, like you said, tries to spam into the running back. It's going to get eliminated instead, but an elimination onto Astro as well. Omi not with that resurrection online quite yet, so the pressure going to be out. They're not going to get the resurrection this time around, but they're going to go for the immediate spike plant. They're not going to make that same mistake twice. It's going to be one of those fool me once situations. They're not going to be fooled again in that matchup. A 4v4. Things are going to be neck and neck. Both these teams have to commit pretty much right here, right now. Omi just able to get away from a grenade, not able to take any damage off the back of it, but they're being pincered. They're being closed in on the wall comes out immediately destroyed and the pressure the bullets are flying omi gonna get back to the spike hug it a little bit able to pick up lux right away but noro able to find that elimination a 3v2 in favor of midland scout finds mitchell and this has to be nothing short of amazing coming out from Hayes here able to find one elimination can they find two more no it's gonna be the elimination coming through and i'm not sure they're gonna be able to defuse the spike in time it's gonna be close but it looks like they might just be able to to secure that victory and yes 4.56 seconds left on the clock that's gonna be a win here underneath the belt of midland they're taking us all the way to map three and there was a world right there where omi stays alive a little bit longer they had their resurrection so they could have actually gotten that off unfortunately they died as soon as they got it online because they got one uh spike like point uh one ultimate point after planting the spike and then they got a kill so that was enough to get it there but immediately traded it out after and then from there it just wasn't enough for sacramento state to win that one out so we are going to be going to that map three it's going to be split ends I, I have no idea who's going to win this series except wins. I, I thought for sure Sacramento State had it in the bag after having another great comeback but they could never take the lead all they could do was tie it up and it wasn't enough to get it done here on a sense yeah, no, absolutely. And I mean, you can play that kind of comeback story play style and it can work, but it's not going to always work, especially up against a team that has suddenly become so consistent like Midland so far. That has been definitely quite, I mean, quite impressive coming out. Midland, they come down from a huge deficit. They have the lead for most of a set. They lose it for just a moment and they snatch it back in the final grasp. They're just a phenomenal look. 
It is indeed. We'll see if that phenomenal look continues to shine through after a quick break, but don't go anywhere. We'll be going, we'll be coming back with the tiebreaker map split. Actually, we're not going to be taking a break, so we're just going to go straight into it, it looks like. Yeah, looks like we're going to get these folks lined up in just a minute here. We're going to get things figured out. But while I've got the mic once again hot in my favor, this is your posture check once again, my friends. Trying to do that a lot more for myself. And if I do it for you guys, it helps me remember to do it for me. Also, drink some water. You know, it's cold, but you still got to get that water in your system. So definitely do both those things while you're here. And of course, just another reminder, you are watching the NECC Esports Valorant Week 2 against Sacramento State and Midland. So definitely keep an eye out on that. There were some games earlier today. There's going to be one more game after this that I won't be here for, but Jag will so keep an eye out for that these games are uploaded to youtube if you want to watch any of the games that you saw earlier today they're not going to be up quite yet but they will be up very soon so keep an eye out for that of course if you're not dropping a follow here or on our twitter do any of those things because it doesn't hurt follow jag and i on twitter as well of course i'm going to plug us for just a moment we'd love to see it we'd love to see you guys here more at necc for all of the games we have throughout the week it would just be fantastic but we're going to jump right back into this agent selection screen here on split our third and guaranteed final map Yep, but it looks like we're not swapping sides. So it's going to be Sacramento State once again on defense first, in Midland on attack. And, you know, when you just see split and you get defense, you're like, oh, this is an easy game. But things have changed since then. Split has been modified. It has been made a lot more even ground. I think it's still a bit of a defender's adva advantage, but it's not nearly as bad as it used to be. We're going to see a bit of changes. So Scout's going to be sticking with the Yoru, which I'm not surprised about. I mean, it not did really all. well last time. In fact, this is the exact same comp we just saw yep. from Midland on... Um, on that last map ascent, so they're going to be sticking with it, and we are going to see a bit of changes coming out now from uh, Sacramento State. I think they might have heard us about the Reyna because they're not running it. Instead, they're going back to what they ran on Bind, which they won with. Yeah, I think I think Cipher is just going to be a better swap here. I think Astro going to be swapping off that Reyna going to be better, and I don't think Cipher is going to be better than Killjoy in a lot of situations. But not only are you going up against another Cipher at this moment, I think that's really going to even things up. But now Killjoy, I feel, doesn't get as much value as Cipher on a lot of this map specifically on Split. I think this is a lot closer corridor, a lot more versatility coming out from that Cipher kit. Killjoy, of course, still gets value because her kit is insane, but it um, definitely I feel doesn't match up as well with Cipher. But Moving forward, like you said, a lot of things not really changing. Almost identical matchups coming out from these teams. As I mean, this is actually this is the exact matchup that we saw on map one. With some changes, because the the scout uh, scout oh, wasn't the scout, playing. Right, right. Scout, <laughs> I'm so used scout to him playing, playing Yoru. <laughs> yeah, with that performance that he gave me, him on Yoru just feels like a given at this point. I mean, I feel like he's been on it for ages with that phenomenal performance we saw on that second map. But yeah, yeah. other than that, this is that map that that matchup from map one. It's basically both teams running what they've won on so far. So whatever they won on the map they won, that's what they are deciding to run here. And I think that once again, Sacramento State actually has the better comp like they did on the first map, but not on the second one. Um, I think Siege is really good here. Raze is also really good here. Both teams running that, but it's triple duelist. Um, Yoru, I, I know, like, I feel like he's not great for a triple duelist comp. I think a Jet might be the answer here instead, but they decide to stick with it, and they looks like they are pressing very aggressively onto A. Yeah, I mean, pushing into A is definitely going to be a, a great strategy. And able to find an elimination straight away, what? Able to pick up Astro. I think going for the immediate plant really is kind of the best strategy moving forward on these maps in these early round ones. Mitchell able to find Noru, though, so it's going to be a 4v3 in favor, of course, of Midland, those attackers. They got the spike planted, so the timer is ticking for our defending team, which is, of course, currently Sacramento. Or the, Sacramento 2, actually, their second team. And right now, the like I said, spike has been planted. The timer, all of a sudden, like, the pressure is down. You you need to get to that spike. You've got such a small limit. I'm oh! Saying, is able to bring it back, and now somehow, some way, this might be winnable for the defenders. It's now only this. It's just a Sage versus a Cypher. They're basically staring at each other, and oh, oh me! Wow. Coming out clutch. I think what got about four kills there if i remember correctly but it might not be enough no it's end. not coming this through there's no is way go off there's no oh, oh me just, just maybe oh. like a second and a half earlier or literally one second earlier and that could have been cracked wide open for the defenders but oh me just you know that's not even their fault they just planted the spike so quickly yeah, and I want to correct myself. It was actually only three kills that what got, but still a great 3k by them early on. They're going to buy a Phantom in round two. They're going to go for the Light Armor, but they're going to go for that hard commit. I think they realized that uh, Sacramento State, they're going to go for a buy of their own here. So, you know, they're just going to buy that Phantom earlier on, and it's going to have very much superior firepower to anything else that's currently on the map. 
Yeah, that's a, that's a bold choice to say the very least. So definitely going to be some hyper-aggressive attacks coming through. And not going to go for that ult grab. And that's, yeah, of course, you might as well. You've got the safety to do it. You might as well put the pressure on. Astro finds one straight away, but Shiloh finds Astro off the back of it. A 4v4 once again. These folks going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Scout picks up Oni and Lux. Going to be pushing in with that bomb buddy. Just trying to get any sort of recon. Trying to get any sort of matchup here. The pressure coming out. Omi, you know, maybe we see a frag from Omi here. Maybe this is finally their map and their time to shine. I feel like Omi really steps it up um, on the last map on Ascent compared to what they did last week, but I think they need to continue that going. It's really been them that's been the top fragger wow. so far, but not <laughs> able to get it done. That Phantom stays with uh, with Midland despite the fact that what fell early, but Shiloh was able to pick it up, so that's great for their economy. Yeah, absolutely great for their economy moving forward. That's two rounds back to back, and that's going to make this round even more difficult to win for the defenders, of course, because their economy is going to be way smaller. Yeah, and I'm, I'm surprised uh, that Shiloh isn't giving it back to what, honestly, after how well they've been doing, but I guess they're going to keep it. They're gonna also going to keep the spike, and despite losing that, we're still seeing a bit of a buy from Sacramento State, which is very, very surprising. Uh, I feel like they just said, go big or go home, and last time it didn't work out, so they're going to buy two rounds in a row despite losing the last rounds. A lot of Buckies, we saw them be pretty proficient with them earlier. We'll see if we can do it enough, and like you said, Split is very close quarters, so we'll see if they can get them in the situations that they're not good in. Oh, but Lux able to take out Astro once again. Just not even toe to toe, just bullet to face at this point. Lux getting some great shots. Omi picks up Nora with that Bucky very early on, able to find that elimination. Mitchell able to find Scout as well. So the first time, I think, all game other than Omi popped off. This is the numbers advantage that Sacramento's been missing here in these first two rounds. Trying to secure their own round because, you know, only two rounds have been won. But if you're able to win with the economy they currently have, I mean, that would be nothing short of amazing. You need to take out Shiloh, you to get rid of this Phantom, and right now you're not even looking at it. You're able to get a few kills elsewhere, but you're oh, weak, no. and your Sage Orb has already been used. Yeah, this is going to be a mildly disastrous. Lux just doing a great job, three eliminations there. Shiloh, I think, able to find two of their own, and that's going to be a third round, just ending in favor. I mean, this is just nothing short of incredible here coming out from Midland. We've seen this a few times, though, right, where they get ahead very early and then it falls apart later on. Yeah, very um, true, so very true. I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch, and maybe this will be the time that they're actually able to keep that lead and stay ahead and just dominate the rest of the matchup. I, I think the biggest thing right now is finally we're seeing after three rounds that we're going to have a buy from Sacramento State, and it's again, it's a second round gambit. Last time it didn't, it didn't hurt them as much on Ascent. Here it looks like it really has hurt them a pretty good amount. Uh... So they really, this is like, this is the round that's most important to win right now. And the biggest thing is, it's not even that the guns are equal, it's the fact that the ultimates are not Midlands. They have that showstopper, they have the orbital strike, and we've seen both of them get a lot of value. Yeah, Showstopper getting the most value of many Valorant games that I've seen this week. I've seen so many of them just getting shut down time and time again, pulling out that Showstopper and immediately being dismissed from the matchup there. And the Orbital Strike, we've seen get, like you said, some pretty intense value. It's not exactly a high kill ultimate, but oh, oh, wait a second. They're... They both have no idea that the other one is right there. I'm pretty sure that was Lux and Mitchell. Just, I'm pretty sure they just like touched shoulders and yeah, walked I'm, right I'm looking past at the mini map. <laughs> but wow, wow, that's crazy. But Mitchell able to find Shiloh there. Mitchell able to pick up Noro as well with the wall bang. We hear the showstopper come out, but Lux able to pick up Mitchell. They go toe to toe. One raise comes out victorious. The showstopper already being committed. What finds Oni and Omi? That last player, again, has no cooldowns, a Vandal and a Dream, has to pick up three eliminations here, and now that the Cypher, oh yeah, this is, this is disastrous, Scout with the headshot onto Omi, it's gonna be as simple as that, four rounds in a row here for Midland, they're taking, I mean, like you said, this has happened before, but four rounds in a row, I mean, that, that's a great start. This is, like, exactly what Ascent was like, if I'm remembering this correctly, but yeah, I mean... It is still a great start nonetheless. Again, the question is, can they keep it up? Can they keep the momentum? Can they not course, drop the ball when side swap or before side swap? Which is what they've done a few times. Last time it, on Ascent, they were able to clutch out on Vine, not so much. Which is why we're on our map three scenario. I, I think the biggest thing there, I, you, you touched about uh, the, the raise and the ultimates getting value. Right now, Lux is top fragging, which is the first time we've seen them do it really all day. I feel like generally they've actually been more near the bottom, despite being on raise, which is a very high kill potential agent. But split is their home because of the verticality. You talked about just like being on top of a box with that blast pack. Unless you get places you shouldn't be able to. And there we saw the blast pack being used right before the showstopper was launched. That's the reason oh. they were with Mitchell. They just displaced them. And now the dimensional rift is going to come out.
Yeah, the commit from the Dimensional Drift there was, I, I, I Scout, I think, used that not to die. That was a very interesting play to see. There, we're going to see the two for two trade come out right away. It's going to be that 3v3. Hayes able to pick up Lux. Scout finds Hayes, though. It's now 3v2 in favor. Oh, 1v3 in favor of Midland again. I mean, this has just been five rounds in a row. I don't think, I mean, they had some good rounds on Ascent, but they did not win five in a row there, I don't think. I, I think they did, actually. I think it wasn't. Un I mean, it might have actually... I mean, I know they got, like, three rounds before there, so... It was something like that. But, regardless, it's Astro being in a pretty bad spot right now. They do have to run it back, but it's a 1v3, and I don't think you can commit it here. I, I think yeah, you just go for a trade, and then you run. Yeah, even with the run it back, I mean, that's... that's and the spike's already in its second phase there of that ticking, so you probably lose that. Astro able to find Shiloh, and, I mean, maybe able to find... Scout around the corner, but yeah, no, Scout gonna pick up the elimination anyway, so definitely just, just a very slow burn, and Midland, yeah, able to secure that fifth round, definitely looking very good, the economy very clearly in their favor, their, their highest buyer currently sitting at 7,500, and the highest on the side of Sacramento is 1,800, so it's, uh, it's, it's definitely a huge economy difference here. I mean, it, it's like this, it's like this again, right, like, they need somehow, some way to win one of these rounds. And every time they get the equal buy, which this is only the second time they've really been able to do it since the the pistol rounds, um, yeah. they've lost. So right. they have ultimates. That's that's the one thing they didn't have last time when it was round, I believe it was like going into round four. Um, they didn't have ultimates. Now they do. They have the resurrection especially. <laughs> so they, they have more things that can possibly get them their first round, but... They need to use them in the right order, and that's the run it back being used first. Yeah, the run it back comes out very early on, looking for any kind of elimination. But wow, the spike plants from Midland are just so fast in this game. I mean, just this map entirely, they've been coming out time and time again, getting these very early spike plants. And like, even if they lose the round, which they haven't been doing, but even if they do, they then get those credits just simply for planting the spike. This is going to be 4v2 in favor of of Sacramento, but we've seen them in this position before and they lost it, so they really are going to have to be careful here. The Rays committal, but now Hayes able to pick up one, make it two eliminations. Hayes being in that top fragger position, we're so used to seeing them in, currently tied with Mitchell at six eliminations. And it's also kind of crazy to consider that Sacramento is currently down five to one, but their top fragger is only one elimination short of what we're seeing on the side of Midland. Yeah, it's really just the battle of the Rays right now. Actually, really the Snipers is. as well, both of them top fragging yeah. on either team. Yeah. Just Pretty funny, and I, I guess, I don't know if ironic's the right word, but it's, you know, little, the, all those little fun little similarities there. I think the biggest thing is, uh, we talked about how many ultimates there was on the side of Sacramento State, and they used three there. Uh, one of them, especially at the end, for Mitchell that came out that was not needed. So yeah. that's, uh, I mean, again, like, the raise all the showstopper, doesn't always land anyway, so it's not the biggest thing to use, but I gotta think, like, could have saved it, especially when it's a 4v2. Now all you've got is the resurrection, and you might want to try to use it now that you've traded. Yeah, not the biggest to use, but probably pretty big to lose. You know, it's going to be you want to have that online, you want to try to use it and try to confirm a kill. That was definitely the end of a fight, so not really necessary. The run it back from Noro just sent to the grave there. Going to be forced into that teleportation, but now they've got a little bit of recon. Scout going to go for another early plant, just trying to guarantee that little bit of economy coming through here because I know that you guys probably can't see it on screen, but if you get the next chance to glance within these next couple of rounds, Sacramento, they're currently up in the economy, but as I say it, we're seeing it very slowly and even more in their favor. The aggression coming out. Sacramento, it's going to be four versus one here. Noro, no Going for their frag potential, but 4v1, almost impossible. Omi able to secure that headshot elimination. It's going to be a good look. Two rounds in a row. Momentum finally in favor of Sacramento, but they're going to have to keep it up for a little while here. I mean, they've got to win four more rounds to simply take the lead. And that was a big play right at the end. They grab the operator just as time expires before they go back to spawn. Oh, and so that's Omi a loves free the operator. 5,000 credit gun. They'll say, yeah, yeah please. Thank you very much. And Omi, you know, has surprisingly been the operator player. We, we talked a little bit about how they have it accurate, but they have to be really careful about their positioning. So for their sake, I hope they're playing back. I'd love to see them play in screens if they are going to commit to this A site, which is exactly what they're doing currently. Um, they just have to be careful about not being too far forward, and they're going to have a very clean sight line. Yeah, that's such an elongated sight, and I mean, Omi, like we talked about, very, very careful with the operator, and Scout being the first one taken out, I mean, that's going to be disastrous here. Definitely not fragging like we saw on those la on that last map, but definitely still, I mean, second like, second in line here in eliminations on the side of Midland, so doing a good job, just not standing out as much, which is good, because that means everybody on Midland is doing their part. When you look at, on the side of Sacramento, their top fragger, eight eliminations, their lowest, one. If you look at Midland, you see seven, and then the four is the lowest, so much closer in terms of eliminations here coming out from Midland. Mitchell able to find Lux, but what 
picks up Mitchell off the back of it. So a 4v3 still in favor of Set. Never mind. A 3v3 now going to be tied up as Noro finds Astro. The pressure is going to come out now because Sacramento, when they start to lose a lead like this, those are the rounds where I feel they really start to crumble instantaneously. And there's no resurrection in sight for them, so that Sage Ultimate's not going to find a value just yet. They have the Orbital Six. Oh, so they, no, could, no. they could try to back out. Oh, Omi, they'll be able to get the wall bang onto what? The wall bang onto what? But Shiloh finds Omi with a wall bang of their own. They put they put the operator away at the worst possible time. Still able to find one elimination off the back of it. Now the operator going to be on that ground. I wonder. I mean, is anybody going to take it, or are they going to they're going to choose to leave it there? It seems as nobody else has that operator lined up. Hayes looking to find some damage. Looks like he's got this Phoenix cornered. But no, it's going to be Shiloh from behind with the headshot. Not checking your corner, standing right in front of an open window. That's going to cost you your life. That's going to be a sixth round win here for Midland. Yeah, that was some um, very questionable positioning from Hayes at the very end. I think your plan there is just get the operator and dip. Uh, instead, you give up her life. And I, I mean, I, you know there's someone in ropes. You know there's someone that's just around that corner. But you got to remember, you're standing right in an open window. And they just planted the spike. So there's going to be someone directly across from you on the low ground seeing you seeing your backside and you're turned you're not paying any attention to them so just a bit of a misplay there got a little bit too um let's say just a little bit too short-sighted zealous and overzealous that could be the word for it too and i mean we talked about how midland kind of gives up leads but that brings it back and now their alt economy is looking good but hey's gonna take the first kill on the bucky yeah, Hayes with the Bucky onto Lex, and Omi commit to the Operator buy. They purchased another one there, so the Operator now online. Mitchell with the wall bang headshot onto Noro there. It's going to be a 3v5. Sacramento, they're finally getting some momentum here once again. They lose that last round, but now they're putting the pressure on. Shiloh knows that that Cypher is just around the corner, but is a little bit afraid to do so, because I think Cypher has a Bucky, if I'm not mistaken. Sure does. Going to put the pressure on. Only eight damage. The wall bang kill onto Hayes. The Bucky's good, but, uh, you know, not... Not, not from uh, 45 feet away. Omi able to pick up an operator elimination there. And we're going to see the Yoru committing the ultimate to get a little bit of recon. That's um, unusual to say the least, but I'm sure they're definitely looking at the numbers here. Just trying to find out where everybody's at, and it's going to cost them their life. Just ran right into Oni and Omi, respectively, and that's, that's going to be nothing short of a disaster. Defenders come out on top of that, only losing Haze there around the middle of that matchup. That's going to be another map for Sacramento. They could go into this close to a tie if they can keep up their momentum. One thing I'm surprised about is that they didn't commit the Dimensional Drift prior. I think they could have used it to just, when they were trying to peek um, the where the Bucky was, that Haze was holding, that was the great time to use it, but then they lost in more numbers, so then they use it very late into that engagement, which didn't get nearly as much value as it could, and again, we haven't seen that tie come out just yet, but every time we've seen that Sacramento State, they're able to bring it back near the end. Yep. Um, the 6-6 six, six, still possible, the other options, 8-4, 7-5, so... It's not as good for Midland as it could be. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point. It's not as good as it could be. It's actually probably worse than we've seen in these last couple of rounds here. But as this pressure comes out, they're going to put the pressure on. Hayes able to find Lux right away. Here comes a showstopper from Mitchell over the wall. They're able to find one off the back of it. That's going to be two eliminations now for Sacramento. Trying to find something. Omi picks up a third. Mitchell able to find a fourth. And here comes the fifth from Mitchell. A flawless round. Blink and you miss it moment. That was nothing short of phenomenal. But again, like, this is the question I've asked a few times now of Sacramento State. They win rounds very decisively, but a lot of times they're burning three to four ultimates there. It's yeah, three. Yeah, very I mean, true. Very they true. use Neural Theft, they use... I, I think it might have only been two, but they use Neural Theft, and they use the Showstopper. I'm not sure they use anything else there. Uh, I'm just trying to use Tab really quickly, and I think that's about it. Um, and th that's just, you know, they got value out of both of them. I wouldn't say they... Especially yeah. the Showstopper, but the Neural Theft coming in at the end when it's a 4v2. Okay, like... Do you really need to know where they are exactly? You should be able to win that with numbers alone as long as you're covering different angles and then following up when you trade out. Absolutely, but we've seen Sacramento. They're not uh, necessarily consistent on winning 4v2s. We've seen them lose a couple today. And now Astro and Oni able to pick up two eliminations. They're the showstopper. Not going to be able to find any value. Shiloh and Scout able to trade those two back, so we're going to be in a 2v2 matchup. It's Silva and uh, Silva, excuse me. A Yoru and a Brimstone going up against a Sage, who's got a double operator kill lined up. Omi able to secure another defender win. And I, we're getting closer and closer to that tie. I mean, these rounds just falling in the laps of Sacramento here. It might finally happen, and I was thinking, oh man, Omi's just gonna go for the resurrection, they're gonna play farther back, they're gonna stay alive, and Omi said, nah, I'm just gonna run straight into two people, neither of them can kill me, and <laughs> it's a risk. It's so risky, especially, again, when it's your Sage, who has the most utility left on your team, and somehow, some way, Omi makes it work, and also it's a little bit in the favor right now of Midland, but you see that a lot of them are gonna have to go for the Bulldog and the Spectre, so the only... 
full assault rifle they have right now is the Phantom. The Bulldog definitely not bad by any means, but it's that Spectre that really concerns me. Yeah, of course. I was thinking that same thing. A Spectre in this kind of matchup here going up against a full throttle matchup. We see a full buy coming out from the side of Sacramento. They're going to be pushing in with a couple of Bulldogs and a Spectre. So they're definitely going to be firing a little bit, a little bit less, doing a little bit less damage on bullets. But nope, doesn't matter as Hayes. Not checking that corner, not paying full attention. Oni able to get that vengeance kill. Gonna bring it into a 4v4, make it a 3v3 as what and Noro get eliminated respectively. One Cypher ultimate comes out. Shiloh able to find Mitchell off the back of it. It's gonna be a 3v2. Omi, however, still alive. And the resurrection comes through onto Mitchell. That could be huge here for Sacramento. But now that they've committed that resurrection, they're gonna have to win this. Mitchell getting that vengeance kill early on, making it a 3v2 in favor of Sacramento now. The pressure gonna come out and Yoru and Brimstone. Neither ultimate online. We see there's another showstopper online for Mitchell. This could be this could be a flashy play if they wanted it to be. It's a very early orbital strike that's something they could have used for later, but Shiloh tries to get a very aggressive play. It does not work out. And now you see what they're trying to do there. right now. Scout's still on B, but everyone else is rotating to A. And I think, yeah, so they're catching on to this right now. But here's the thing with Scout now on the flank. That is very dangerous to decide to pursue this through the defender spawn. Um, especially if you're able to, even if you get only one kill, it makes, makes things so much easier. Because right now, they're going to have to turn your attention to you instead of Shiloh, oh, but there it is. they kill Shiloh, and uh, that, that, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Damn, Scout has no cooldowns, isn't even going to get to the spike within the next 10 seconds. Might be able to pick up a couple of exit kills here, um, getting danger close to Omi. If they're able to take out that Operator, that could be huge. Never mind. All right, Oni finds Scout with the elimination there. That's going to be another round. The tie-up coming through, it's going to be 6-6. Six to six. And this is going to be the last round before we go into overtime. This could be the first time we see another lead coming out for Sacramento. They're definitely playing more consistently than I think we've seen all night. Yeah, halftime now has happened, and they swap sides. Handshakes all around, and it's just an even game. So it's essentially a first to seven at this point, unless yeah. they get tied up. And then, you know, we haven't seen overtime yet, but we got very close to it last time around. This is the most uh, consistent we've seen, or I guess the best performance we've seen from Sacramento State before the switch, where they're finally able to even things up. Every time out before that, they've gained up and lead and then just had to make an amazing comeback. So it's much more in their corner, but it's really, again, it's like, they always buy on the second round or after, like, you know, before or after the swap, you know, the second round after just a round. Um, and I think that's something that they might want to walk away from this time around of how close things are. If they yeah, I agree. It. I agree. I think if they lose this here, it could definitely spell disaster moving forward, because of course whoever wins this pistol round gets that, gets that mild advantage of the economy, and right now Mitchell trying to find two eliminations, able to do so, picks up that headshot, gonna get healed up just a little bit, and the ghost coming in handy, gonna commit the grenade down the drain there, might be able to pick up a kill off the back of it, but no, a little bit of damage perhaps, scout critical condition, gonna be taking out, taking out Haze there in the mix-up, Mitchell able to find their third kill, I mean there is an ace on the board here, this is still possible for Mitchell to find an ace, but they've got a minute and three seconds to plant the spike, let alone find these two final eliminations. B going to be left wide open. Scout and, um, not Hayes. Scout and what, excuse me, are going to be completely off points. So the spike plant going to come through essentially for free, but they're still going to have to take out both these players. So they really want to make sure the spike doesn't get defused. What now? Rotating around the corner. Probably, gonna, I feel like going to get eliminated pretty much right away. They're going to check their corner, maybe have their head taken clean off and scout at pretty much as critical of a condition as you can be and still be breathing. So this is definitely going to be nothing short of nearly impossible here for, uh, uh, Midland, they might they might finally lose this tie up. It might indeed. I mean, what does have that camera? But it's Millie oh. destroyed. They're going to be going into a matchup against Mitchell. Give you away too. Yeah, it does. Yeah, they're going to be able. Can they find the ace? All they need they is that one last ace. shot onto this Yoru. The team patiently waiting for Mitchell to pick up the ace. Oh. No, Scout gets the kill. Oh, but Astro able to pick up the elimination on the Scout. So no ace online, but you know, still around winning. At the end of the day, that's much more important than getting an ace. In that first lead, it's finally in their corner. And Mitchell, look at this. They fracked out so much third round. They're able to get a full buy of a Phantom and Heavy Armor. I mean, that's just perfect. You don't get the ace and you die, but you can't do much better than that. That's going to give them such a great advantage in, you know, rounds that they've kind of struggled in. Even when they win that pistol round a lot, we have seen that one thrifty that came out immediately after. So I think, you know, the more the merrier. They really need to make sure that Mitchell does not give up that Phantom early on. If they die, yeah, that falls into the hand, especially if someone like Shiloh or Scout, that is bad news bears for Sacramento State too. 
Yeah, no, I, I could not have said it better. Bad news bears, indeed. And like you said, you've, you've paid for it. Don't be the first one to die. I mean, that's going to be hyper-aggressive there, and you want to use that weapon now that you've paid for it. You've made your bed, and now you have to lay in it. Hayes is going to give away their own location there, and they're going to know somebody's right around that corner. They put up their own little cyber cage, and they're going to try to put the pressure on Mitchell. However, picks up Noru in the middle of the engagement there. Going to put a little bit of pressure on their lonesome. Hayes and Astro going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe here with that cypher hiding just around the corner. What? Not going to be able to get any value yet, because they're going to decide, you know what, never mind, we're going to go, we're going to go all the way around to A. They know somebody's hanging out on B, so they're going to rotate full into A. Mitchell gets another kill, going to be able to pick up two there. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they go for another ace here, because that's two eliminations already, only three to go. Looks like they might find one here around the corner, able to pick up Lux with the wall bang, now only two eliminations away from finding that turnaround, and possibly finding that ace, got danger close to it last time. Nope, all right, never mind, Hayes finds Scott with the wall bang, and Omi going to go for the plant, only one enemy remaining in Sacramento. You know, they really started to pick up the pace. They lose the first five rounds they win five in a row and that's gonna make it six they do indeed now they've not only did they get their first lead last round, they finally extended a lead for a little bit here after not really ever having it in the last map uh their economy now not going to be the best that it can be or at least they're not gonna be able to buy as much so that could be around going back the other way just kind of what we've seen from time to time so eight seven definitely on the table but Mitchell has just really stepped up. I mean, look at this. 25 kills. Next nearest is Hayes and Shiloh, both at 11. That's 14 kills more than the nearest person. They already have their showstopper. So we finally, we could finally see that ace come out for Mitchell or, you know, another 3 or 4K. They just need to be the one that's carrying the team. I mean, we talk about how, you know, you, you don't want to be the only one getting kills off the get-go, but... Right now, this race has just been unstoppable. Yeah, absolutely. The pressure coming out here. And Mitchell trying to find an elimination, but the equalizer not coming through quite yet. 4v5 in favor. Never mind. 4v4 in favor of neither team as it's back to that tie. A Cypher and a Brimstone taken out respectively. So neither of the top fraggers on the teams. Shiloh's still alive, it looks. Yeah, Shiloh's still alive. So that's the top fragger on the side of Midland. And of course, Mitchell's still alive with 25 eliminations. The most in lobby by 13 which I just realized, and that is freaking incredible. Right now, there's going to be a duel there. I mean, yeah, I was going to say Noro fell very low to the paint shell, so they were going to be taken down. And this is a big advantage. They have the spike, so they can plant. And even though they only have Spectre somehow, some way, they have a one-person advantage. They just need to make sure they take out this Brimstone that's trying to rotate behind the wall. Yeah, like you said, the Brimstone trying to rotate behind the wall. And for some reason, it just looks like there is Scout is always one of the last two left alive. I don't know if they're playing way slower, if they're changing their play style a little bit, but somehow, some way, always in that final matchup, in a dimensional drift, into the back of the point, probably going to try to put the pressure on. He knows somebody's there. Hayes able to pick up Shiloh, so it's going to be a 2v1, but Mitchell, critical condition, going to commit the showstopper here. That is a fascinating option. I mean, definitely looking for possibly just a little bit of a flashy choice, but no, it looks like, oh, it's going to be able to find Scout. The flash does pay off. Mitchell, it looks like they're going to drop a 30 bomb because right now they're already sitting at 27 kills. Yeah, it's very unlikely they don't, and that's a huge round that they just won. If Midland had won that, that makes things much closer. Now, it's not just the three-round lead, it's the economy that they just completely put in shambles for Midland because they bought there, now they cannot. Now, everyone on the side of Sacramento State 2 can buy, and you only commit really one ultimate there. It's, it's a huge play. Mitchell has just put the team on their back, but everyone around them has been a huge support cast. I mean, Hayes, that tripwire really helps occur than that round. Yeah, absolutely. Getting caught in it, having the information. You see why Cypher's played on point B a lot. Even on the attack, it's still getting value. Yeah, absolutely. And just something to point out, I mentioned this already, Mitchell has 27 eliminations, which is already a lot. But when you consider the second amount of eliminations in lobby is, or is 14, and the most of the enemy team is 11. Mitchell right now, I feel like top fragger isn't even the word. Like right now, it is just the player of the match right now because this has been nothing short of an absolute bloodbath here for Mitchell. Omi able to pick up Noru. It's going to be a 4v2 and the spike plant coming through. I mean, it's going to be here in just a moment. Omi making their way to B. And it looks like we're going to see a full rotation from all surviving members. That Brimstone and that Yoru going to have to go toe to toe here. But I mean, the spike plant, almost a guarantee. Spike planted there and that's the pressure they needed. Just gonna have to look for these final two eliminations. Looks like Hayes just a little bit too far to the side there. Unable to miss that headshot. And my biggest worry there was that Shiloh would be able to get the angle up top, but because they don't, it's just it's just they can run in because they know Scout is there. They know Scout doesn't have dimensional drift because they just used it a little bit ago. And I mean, I mean, look at this. This is this is the comeback that we kind of expected from Sacramento State on ascent, but it's coming out here. This is eight rounds in a row. And all of them have just been kills that they finished up. I mean, they've gotten the spike planted a few times, but the spike has never even gone off. It. 
Yeah. They don't need it, exactly. And something crazy to consider as well, the highest amount of credits on the side of Midland right now, 1,200. The lowest on the side of Sacramento, 3,600. So they are just, I mean, it has been... It has been absolutely amazing here. Sacramento, they have taken the lead and ran with it. I mean, that's what the economy is going to look like after eight straight wins in a row. I mean, you're really going to have the economy in your favor. We see full buys coming out from everybody here, but I, I just, we're going to have to see a change of pace or a change of plan coming out right now from Midland because what they've been doing so far, it just has not been working for them. It is not indeed. The running back is committed and oh. is going to find one before Aster gets out. They had the resurrection. Oh. They've got two kills and I, it just, it just looks better and better. They do lose one, but... Only going to trade it out. It, it, they can't look any better than they do right now unless they, they really just you know, didn't lose that first person. Yeah, I mean, unless other than these rounds being flawless, I think Sacramento 2 cannot get much better here. They're going to commit the res, which is weird. Scout going to take the kill right away. The wall bang from Hayes able to take Scout out. So getting a little bit bloodthirsty is actually going to cost them their life. Shiloh take it out as well. And I, I just dislike that resurrection. That felt so unnecessary and that could save them in a round later on. It could, I, and as I say, it could be an economy thing, but you pointed this out earlier, their, their economy is basically flawless, so it doesn't really make sense. It could be a bait, just to try to get someone caught off, because, you know, as we've said earlier, when you're resurrected, you are very vulnerable, you're immortal for like five, like half a second, and then you just spawn and you don't have your gun out. So very similar to Phoenix, when you respawn back to where you originally used your runner back, uh, you're, you're just super vulnerable, you can be easily killed. Uh, trade it out, I don't know. It, the round still goes in their favor now they're only two away but it is a bit weird and i think the biggest thing is the economy again still is just not good for midland so even though they do have some ultimates they're really gonna have to commit i think they got to commit everything here or next round uh because there isn't gonna be a round after next round if they yeah, lose we, this one yeah we could very much be on our penultimate range i think our penultimate game excuse me so i think that's something to really keep an eye out for is they are two rounds away from winning this they've already won nine rounds in a row i mean we saw 13 we saw a 13 round win for them so an 11 round win isn't, isn't gonna be shocking we, we've seen them do seemingly the impossible the run it back comes out shiloh picking up a back-to-back -back headshot there oni and mitchell able to tie things up and it's gonna be mitchell trying to get some eliminations here in the back line they did in fact drop that 30 bomb with that elimination currently sitting at 30 in nine which is just i mean incredible to come out here and you lose i mean I, I talked about this already you lose the first five rounds and you're still dropping a 30 bomb this has been absolutely insane what able to pick up mitchell able to stop that train for just a moment gonna be a 2v2 and again scout one of the last ones alive Hayes able to take out lux it's gonna be a 2v1 but if anybody's able to come back from one of these it's gonna be scout so they've definitely got to watch out for this player they've got no idea where he's at but they've got 30 seconds to plant the spike so it's got to be now or never I think the biggest thing is can Scout pick up a better gun? They are. So they had the Spectre, they're able to get the yeah. Vandal. So it's it's possible. They don't have their ultimate, but it's so difficult. I think the biggest thing is you're, you're leaving three ultimates on the table. You see right now the Cypher, Rays, and Brimstone. They all had an ultimate on the side of Midland, and none of them are alive to help you out right now. So it, it, you don't you can give up the gun. I mean, you can die here. It's okay because next round is going to be the last one. Anyway, but you can't oh. do that. You can't just run in and get headshot. Yeah, that was, a little, that was a little bit sloppy, I think. That was, uh, that was uh, definitely not a good look. A bit of a misplay coming out from the scout there. You can't just run face first into the engagement like that. I, I, I that's, that's never going to work for you. I, I don't think there's a world where a play like that works out. Maybe it's Phoenix with a run it back, but I mean, you're, you're, you're not Phoenix. So definitely keep an eye out for that. And we're seeing a, 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 not necessarily a short buy, but not, I wouldn't they, really call it a full like buy nothing. either. Yeah, that's... that's and imagine if they had kept the Vandal, because then Sky right. would have that, and then you right. could buy a Bulldog for Lux, and then at least you all have rifles, right? Instead of having to get for the Spectre. I mean, you still have three ultimates, so if you get a kill early, especially, you can use the Neuro Theft, and then try to play off of that and figure out where everyone is, but oh. it's, it's looking like it slides out, unless Midland can come up with something clutch here. Mid I mentioned this already, they've got three ultimates looking to find four. Noro able to take Mitchell out of the fight, and there's not going to be a resurrection online for Sacramento here, so they're really going to have to climb back from a mild deficit. The showstopper able to pick up two! Lux able to turn the corner and find Hayes and Odie. That's going to be an immediate turnaround. Astro picks up what? And this is still winnable for Sacramento, but you this just got so incredibly harder. There's going to be two left alive. They can plant the spike, they can look for the credits here, but they've got to get to point first, and Lux, a bloodthirsty as ever, is currently guarding this with their life. Yeah, I can't tell they actually got the orb or it was just a bait. Uh, I think they were trying to get someone to peek there, but no one does. And I said something incredible had to happen. Well, uh, I obviously get the kill on to Mitchell, which is like oh. the big thing off the bat. But it's really that, um, it's really the showstopper that opens things oh. up. And that's a round that they win. So they're staying alive. 
and they're gonna get some guns. I mean, are we gonna see? Are we gonna see them pull a Sacramento on Sacramento? I mean, is it is this exactly what they're gonna do here? The Sacramento two, they are infamous for coming back in that final brink of the moment. They're finally able to come back from so many losses in a row. That's the first round in what ten rounds? Nine? Yeah, ten rounds that they finally come out on top. Sacramento, they've still got plenty of credits to work with here, so they can come back. They can give us the exact same full buy. They've got that orbital strike online, two ult or three ultimates, excuse me, just a couple of kills, a couple of rounds away. So Sacramento, they've got the potential, but are they going to choke in these final moments? Yeah, and I think the basic thing is Mitchell has to stay alive. Yeah, you drop the 30 bomb, but you've died two rounds in a row now, and you, just, you can't be doing that when you're the top right. fragger. You really need right. to make sure that you're not giving those free kills up, and oh, oh no. boy, that is not good. Oh yeah, definitely not good. Hayes able to find a kill, but Lux able to pick up two off the back of it. So now the survivors on the side of Sacramento, they're gonna have to put the pressure on like never before. Well, they know that there's someone in ropes because they just shot the bomb, buddy. There's gonna be the blast pack. Can they catch out this Phoenix? It looks like Noro might get away. No, they don't. There's one. Oh, but there's oh, the gonna be a strike. strike. Oh, the orbital strike, Shiloh able to find Mitchell off the back of it, and Oni just barely making it out with their life. This is going to be disastrous. I don't know what cooldown Sage has. It looks like they're not going to be seconds. able to heal here. There's going to be 34 seconds. I. Oh, this is going to be... This is going to be... All the ultimates they have online are going to come online next round. So I think if Sacramento loses this, this is by no means any nail in any coffin. But this, what this is doing is giving the momentum to, to Midland here. So I think, yeah... That's going to be three kills for Lux. Not able to pick up quite an ace, but I think his Omi gets taken out here around the corner. Yep, that's going to be a four kill coming out there. So a great look for Midland once again. But now Sacramento, they've got four of their five ultimates moving into this. So they've definitely got the potential. They're going to have to run out their economy. And now, I mean, things that started off so rough for Midland, they're really giving us a bit of a turnaround. They are indeed. And the question is, can they pull Sacramento on Sacramento? I don't know. Sacramento C2, they're not out of this yet. And like you said, all their ultimates are basically online except the resurrection, so they have a much better chance. I think the biggest thing is don't go into B garage. It has not yeah. worked out. Yeah. And Lux has really stepped it up with all that spam, with the paint shells, with the blast specs. They're just throwing them in. And that's what Raze does. You can just throw in abilities and you can find so much damage out of it. So I think the biggest thing is just don't play there. Play A. Yeah, no, definitely play A. I think, like you said, B Garage, not working out. Oh, and he picks up Noro right away, though. That's going to be nothing short of huge. We hear the run it back come online, but I think that was going to be Astro's run it back. Hayes able to find what? And Lux already. This is looking like it's going to be over here, folks. Scout and Shiloh, the sole survivors of Midland, but it looks like they are going to be losing here in this third game, in this final matchup. Don't get me wrong, a 2v5, definitely winnable. There is a world where they come out on top of this, but I don't think that's the world we are living in today, my friends. Doubt we're going to poke this corner for just a moment, putting a little bit of pressure down. Going to even commit the dimensional drift trying to get recon but you're the last person alive you're gonna have to 1v5 you have to you have to intentionally ace with one attempt but no it's gonna be impossible as mitchell finds their 30 second elimination in sacramento once again a little bit rustier than last time but they do secure a victory here yeah it, it was something they had to work for it was not an easy yeah, victory absolutely. they had to go all the way to map three but they came out on top i think it was 13 to 8 for both maps they won so very similar scoreline and the, the biggest thing for them is they have to figure out a way to start quicker. They're yeah, just agreed. starting so slow, and when they play better teams later on, uh, those teams will not give up leads near the end. Yeah, yeah. No teams are not going to be choking in those final moments like that. Teams are not going to have the, the they're not going to have these small misplays you can take advantage of. So I think Sacramento, this this two team, I think they have great potential. They just need to maybe, like you said, pick up their pace a little bit, get a little bit more aggressive because when they're aggressive, when they hold W, they are seemingly flawless at some times but it's when they get defensive it's when they get slow that they really they really need to pick up the pace also don't play the arena just just yeah, it's also just don't, play arena. don't That's... play arena anymore but um all right i, mean, I that... am oh go ahead go ahead <laughs> let's say like we saw one sacramento state team here sacramento state two and the good news is that if you're a sacramento state fan it's not over for you because there's actually yep. going to be sacramento state one coming up next yeah, like you said, the Sacramento sister team coming up, coming online for you guys. So we're gonna end it right here. We're gonna get the, we're gonna get this other play by play caster in here. It's been a pleasure hanging out with you guys, of course. Shout out to Caleb for being our producer as always, and shout out to Jim for replacing me. Thank you everybody so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. For the time being, Septulence and Jag signing off. Have a good night, everybody.
Thank you.